Welcome back to Always Almost There, a Goose podcast series by Storm Sound and Osiris Media. I'm Ryan. I'm Danny. I'm Brian, a.k.a. Jive Goose. I'm Freeman Kev. And I'm Neil. The five of us are back together today to recap Goose's first ever European tour. Woo! Oh, it's exciting. Oh. You know, it's like, I feel like it's a monumental occasion whenever we, we do one of these. You know, I, I like when the tours are, you know, closer together. Like, we went, like, months this year without doing one of these, you know, like the gap between like spring and the summer recap and then summer to fall. Like it was a long time. It was nice that, you know, it's only been like what, six weeks since our, since our last yeah, one. We haven't done one of these. And in now so we long. see more music next week. Yeah. Ho- hopefully this one will be a little bit shorter than our fall recap, but uh, no promises, you know, you know how we are <laughs> again, listen, <laughs> listen like to it. Talk. And as many, as many or as few parts as you need, you like to let it settle go. be, yeah. I like a longer gap every once in a while. Yeah, I gotta be honest. Gap, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Marinate just, a little. I just feel like it's more special. Yeah. It's more special when, when we get when we get back to it. That's you know? fair. And I would just like to say before we dive into the tour, huge shout out to you guys, especially Neil, for holding down the evening after show broadcast for most of Europe tour. It, w- it was really nice to be in Europe and for the majority of the shows know that the pod was in good hands. With you guys, you know, I was either sleeping or out. And it was fun to hop on the few of them that I hopped on. You know, nothing like a nothing like a good really late night yeah. pod. We're, we we show. are very thankful for Neil's moderation. Uh yes. for being able to, Did I really moderate? Well, to prevent right. uh Ryan from coming on. And <laughs> yeah, there's that a couple part, times. I was gonna... <laughs> like that, that <laughs> there, there there was a yeah. lot of mental fortitude that went behind that and into that and, and you held strong and it was in the best decisions of the pod. So definitely kudos. Yeah, there were a couple shows where I should not have been on yeah. and I was not. And, so and Neil made Neil. sure that you weren't. So yeah. yeah. It was the best I could do. <laughs> it was. Well, <laughs> without further ado, uh let's let's hop across the pond here, if we will throw it over to our resident elder statesman for the first show mm-hmm. oh that's me okay i got the tour opener paris france great city this was friday november 3rd tour opener i think we were all pretty excited for this show and i would say that you know they absolutely delivered on this on this tour opener so let me just run through the uh through the first set list real quick so they opened with me and my uncle and then right into a, a really, really good All I Need, Mr. Action, The Whales, Turbulence in the Night Rays, Drive into Bob Don without, but back into Drive. So Bob Don with a with a segue into Drive. So it's kind of a Bob Don with. Drive, Bob, Drive. With, with, drive. with Return to Drive. <laughs> with so, Return yeah. to Drive. That's good. So yeah, this was a this was a really big gap on this me and my uncle. Um, I'm sure Ryan knows the number. Just subtract yes. one. <laughs> and... One hundred and fifty four. It's it's uh, last played January twenty seventh, twenty twenty two. One fifty five shows. Neil pasted that in the chat, by the way, which means that he actually, approves of the number. Canadian Wait, that actually is what's on Nug. So one hundred and fifty five Canadian shows. Your note would be one note off. Yeah, this is on elgoose.net, and that that site can't really be trusted. It's always off by one. Sorry, but there there are multiple people on this podcast who are involved in the curation team of that site. So let's uh, yeah, let's that's for another podcast. Let's let's take that offline. (laughs) (laughs) But hey, here's a fun fact. Uh, Yes, me and my me and my uncle was the first goose song Mm. I ever saw live. So me too. Thank you for that fact. Also, oh, back and in the day. Also, okay. Yeah, me too. Well, I will. <laughs> well, I, I want to, you know, kind of for each of the stops on this tour, I want to give a little bit of background on the venue as well uh, for people who, you know, may not have seen pictures or, you know, heard from people. Um, this one was cool. You know, obviously it was the first show of the tour, so we didn't really know what to expect timing wise and, um, you know, like what, what the small rooms were going to look like. Uh, this was like an, like an underground almost place in paris it was in the middle uh of this park the parc du villette uh which has another couple of concert halls and like right next to the the philharmonic the room was cool it was basically you know just kind of like a club there was like an elevated area just to give a little bit of a better of a vantage point and i think my favorite part about this venue 
was there was a sign that pointed to a spot and said, this is the best spot in the house. <laughs> and there were very few people standing there, uh, which was nice. That sounds uh, like you know, an absolutely that... amazing place for a disco. Well, I got news for you, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> there was a disco. At, at most of the stops on the tour, in fact, Goose's short set times or early curfews was largely due to they had to get out of the venue so there could be a late night disco, <laughs> which, you know, very yeah, European. And yet they didn't. And yes. yet they didn't play Disco Inferno on the tour at all, much to my and B's He's chagrin. I mean, chagrin. Yeah. yeah, I think we're all a little disappointed yeah. in that. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, did you did you go to any of the discos? No, that's, the that's fucked up. Because to get back in, it was like it was like a twenty or thirty euro cover, um, and you know we had no interest in going back to the disco. I think Peter went to the disco after the Amsterdam show uh, in the neighboring venue. You know we have a nice little video of that, courtesy of Navi. Did they let him spin? No, no right. that's uh, that, that's <laughs> Becky. <laughs> oh, I mean he was there. I mean, Space Panther. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, he's he, got a he name played, and everything. He played synth. He played oh, synth. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. He doesn't spin. Oh. Anyway, uh, let's talk about this first set from Paris a little bit. Uh, you know, B kind of read the song names and said that the all I need was good. Uh, but I'd like to offer a little bit, you know, more analysis there. Uh, getting me and my uncle was cool. Uh, this was interesting. First of all, my first time seeing it, obviously, because the last time they played it was before I had seen Goose. And second of all, Peter played keys on it. He has historically played guitar. So just interesting to see that happen, but it was a great cover, great way to start the tour. And then this All I Need, 20 minutes, great jam, you know, for the second song of the tour, reminded me a little bit placement-wise of the cap, All I Need, you know, second song, first show of the tour, and just getting right down to business. Uh, this one is great. You get a nice little major key excursion to start, some clav action. Clam. And then another great peak uh, to close it out. Uh, I'm getting shit in the chat here, so I'm going to turn it back over to B uh, to talk about this all I need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's pretty good. <laughs> all right. Who wants to um, next? Yeah, I mean, so look, uh, we talked about this. This, You know, this is why I actually don't like doing day after shows, by the way, because then I come on this pod and I feel like I'm kind of saying the same stuff, but um, I don't know. What are the chances somebody listens to both though? So, <laughs> so, Zero. so here's, so I'll just say it again and pretend, you know, no, I never said it before. Um, <laughs> no, but seriously, this is, I think, I think after this, all I need, my, my thought was, well, yeah, of course, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna drop right into all I need at, at, when they kick this tour off because they're just so comfortable uh, it's a jam they can pretty much kind of knock out of the park every time. Uh, you know, I've been playing this song for a long time, and I think they, they obviously really like it. They slip into really nice jams really easily whenever they play All I Need. And so so you talked about it a little bit, Ryan. Yeah, there's, there's you know, really three nice little sections in this jam. Um, mm -hmm. And it's and it's not even incredibly long, but, you know, they really, they really just kind of hit the ground running with it. So, yeah, yeah, really nice kind of blissy jam. Uh, then you get the clav jam, then you get, you know, kind of a nice bluesy, um, you know, power finish. So yeah, hot stuff, hot stuff. And then uh, a nod to the crew right away, which is nice. Cause yeah, you got to think about that doing a big tour like this. It's a lot of work and you, you know, you're doing all this traveling and you know, it's the logistics are just so different than, than what, than what you're used to. You know what I mean? And it's also a little bit of a trimmed down crew um yep. in some respects as well so so yeah quick nod to the crew with mr action whales turbulence and yeah then you get the drive bob don drive sandwich which um interestingly enough we'll we'll, we'll see another drive sandwich um on this tour but uh yeah really good stuff um i thought this was a i thought this was a really strong start uh to the tour so yeah good good set one yeah agreed this is all i need very, very, very good. This this show actually gave me high hopes for this tour. I, I thought, oh man, like here we go. Like it reminds me of actually the first night of the cap. Yeah. When I heard that, I was like, oh man, this tour is gonna be insane. Turns out it didn't really work out that way, but uh, you know, it's no I mean, sugar coating. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be ultra critical here, but 
it this show would lead you to believe that this this tour is going to be filled with incredible yeah. jams, right? Um, cause there are several very good gems in the show or a few, you know, this, all I need was the, the, you know, the first of them. And it is, it's awesome. It's got sections to it has a pretty like raunchy clav section. It's got a nice blissy section to it. It's good stuff. It is Kev D either. You guys got thoughts on this first set. Not, uh, uh, the dead 72, right? Me and my uncle opener sacrosanct to make that comparison or even, you know, voice, uh, those two bands in the same, uh, sentence to some people, but. I think it's apt. I think it's respectful uh, to do it. I think it was a great choice. A respectful nod. If I you know. agree, man. I think it was a great choice for an opener, and it, it was a great show, like you guys said. Excellent set list. Mm-hmm. Actually, speaking about the, the opener, I didn't say this part, which I had in my notes. I, I just want to say this one part, which is this me and my uncle was confusing. Like, it didn't sound like me and my uncle right away. Yeah, it did. <laughs> no, it didn't. Like, go back and listen to that. Like, I think we were all a little bit confused. I, I, posted like, what is the, this? I posted the set list tweet immediately. Oh, well, we weren't. We've never done to that wrong. No, your set list tweets because they were so early. <laughs> right. They were coming from Europe. No, yeah. never. None of us yeah. who do the set list have ever done it wrong. <sighs> but no, uh, if you go back and listen to this, me and my uncle, it does not start like a me and my uncle traditionally starts maybe for a and, noob. Like no, I agree, Neil, in terms, Oh man, in terms of just, oh, in terms of just the, the, the strumming, like do, 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 do yeah. the, the way that they play it sort of, it, it did have kind of a little, little different. I, I think in sort of a first song, that was Mississippi half step, man. Yeah, I was going to say, you're, <laughs> yeah, that, you're humming the wrong song there, man. <laughs> I listened to that. Fucking half stuff. I, I listen... well, Goose, is, Goose has always played I me and my uncle to earlier today. In a different oh. arrangement. <laughs> you're like you're like yeah, Bert, seriously. You know, me and um, me and my half like step. Me and my half step. Me and my half step. No, I mean I thought I thought hot. it was a. <laughs> <laughs> I thought uh, yeah, I I I liked the the first set. I think you had kind of a good mix. Um, all I need is obviously the highlight here. Uh, like B said, it it. I think it's it's something that they we saw it with the Taboos tour. You know, it's sort of a, the first song they brought, obviously the first big jam with Trey and sort of like being able to just confidently hit the song. Um, yeah, good sections in it. I remember you sort of uh, reporting back to us live because this was one that we didn't get the stream the first night. Uh, so we were all excited um, for, yes. for the initial... Right kickoff of the europe show and uh massive blue balls but um definitely yeah not at nope. work definitely not nope. definitely nope. Not wouldn't have work. been cutting out so this was kind of one that was cool because i think we were definitely impressed by the the jams that came yeah like brian said great little moments the drive cut up i think it's it's a good little ender and it fit well the rest of the tour but yeah just a good opening so- set that has some of their better songs and you know, just a nice blend kind of jams, covers. Good stuff. Yeah. Should we move on to set de? Good French. Yeah, solid French. Yes. Thank you. We. Oui. Thank you. Multilingual. Thank you. Multi- uh-huh. Multilingual drive. All right. So, yeah, set two. We got the the big Madavan opener, Redbird, A Western Sun, and The Empress of Organos. This set two is interesting because it introduces – a lot of themes that are going to, you know, we're going to see again later on in the tour, you know, Madhavan opener happens. The first show of the tour happens, the last show of the tour. And it got cut from like five set lists in the middle, uh, which is really interesting, that's, but I love that's spoiler. Yeah, and that's, spoiler spoiler that's some eloquent analysis and, and, and very you. well expressed, Ryan. Thank You're you, welcome. Uh, it's not that hard to speak. Words, yes. You know, words. Um, what are they? Sometimes words. it is words. That's Some, okay. What are they? Um, but th- I want to talk about this Madhavan because I love this Madhavan. And something I didn't notice at the time, you know, on re-listen, knowing what's going on, I kind of pick it out, is Peter, with his pared-down keyboard rig that he was using in Europe, he had his regular Nord Stage, his Clav, and his Nord Synth. And he also had a Nord Stage 4, brand new keyboard, just came out a few months ago. That was kind of his organ keyboard that he was using. That was what was going through the Leslie. What was interesting is, you know, we've seen over the past year uh, or so... <laughs> Peter's been using a lot of these marimba and uh, vibraphone sounds on the Nord. And one thing he was experimenting with in Europe was running those sounds through the rotating Leslie speaker, uh, which you hear early on in this Madhavan, which was so cool and something that you don't really get 
you know, obviously in the States when the only thing through the Leslie is the organ itself. Um, so it's really cool early on in this Madhavan. And one of the reasons why I love this jam so much is just the textures that Peter is laying down um, because it, it's so cool. And there's so much to dig into if you listen closely uh, in the early part of that jam. But th this, you know, I think it actually hits me harder on re-listen than it did uh, at the show in the moment. At the show, I was like, this is a great Madhavan. Uh, but then, you know, listening back a few days later, I was like, whoa, this is a really good Madhavan. And especially after getting home, this has made its way onto my playlist upon repeated mm. listens. This Redbird then comes out. Trevor really sticking out in this one, continuing the string of just really, really solid versions of this song. You know, nothing too, too crazy, but this is, I mean, an excellent jam. Western Sun, great cool down. And the first one of the tour where we got to experience that European crowd energy, there was nary a talking person during the quiet parts of Western Sun, which was beautiful because as we all know, most of the time when they play a ballad, mm. people start talking. And you can't, you know, you can't really hear and appreciate the beauty of Rick's songwriting. Here you could hear a pin drop uh, inside inside the venue. Uh, and so Western Sun was beautiful. Um, and then Empress, you know, speaking of themes that are going to show up later in the tour, there were three Empresses uh, played in Europe. All three of them were, you know, a quicker version getting in before curfew. And all three of them showed a little bit of, some cool improvisational potential that if the band had an extra 10, 15 minutes, I think would have ended up being really, really cool. Um, but especially this one, like I, I was standing next to Naveed during this Empress and we both looked at each other and we were like, holy shit, like this is, this is really good. Even though curfew's in three minutes, you know, like <laughs> that. And we wish they had a little more time uh, to explore it, but you know, really, really solid set. And again, as, 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 you know, we were talking about earlier, this is an excellent, excellent way to open the tour. Out of curiosity, Ryan, do you have the uh, Madhavan from this show above the London? No, oh, okay. I do not. No, 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 no. I was just, no. I'm just, I'm just, no. I'm just, no. I'm just, no. I'm just, I'm I'm just, who, who, I'm not I'm that just bad asking dude. questions. Ryan said he he put it on his list and he's been listening to it a lot. So just trying to discern uh, the level of fluff that's happening versus. Oh, no, I've been listening to the London one more. Okay. Um, this Madhavan feels like it's got, uh, some, some good, uh, I think it just kind of sort of settles into a good space. I think the jam itself sort of feels, I mean, there's no way to avoid kind of the, the semi hood comparisons. I think just in terms of the way Rick approaches it, they obviously finish very well in terms of a very energetic peak, but just sort of the way it settles, it's, it kind of actually settles down a little bit before picking back up. So. Um, I liked it though. I thought it just kind of kept the, like B, B was talking about in the first set we had, you know, th three decent jams. Um, I like the Redbird a lot as well to follow. It still kind of followed the mold for a lot of this year, but, um, we did see it kind of evolve a little bit by the end, uh, with the London version and yeah. Um, Empress short and sweet, like you said, I think this was sort of the first evidence of like, oh, we're like, oh, there's one more song. But it, it, it felt a little, um, this is what we saw the rest of the tour. So I think this was a great show, like front to back. First set has kind of some a cover and some hits and some of the newer songs. And then, you know, you move into the second set, they play originals. And um, it's to the point, but still efficient and long in some areas too, like the Monobon. So yeah, very good start to the, to the, to the tour. I actually really like this Redbird. And... I, I haven't gone back to the Madavan as much, mainly because I've been listening to the London one so much. Uh, but yeah, from from the from the day from the you know day after the show, I, I kind of had the Redbird as my you know maybe as my favorite jam of this show. Um, certainly, the Redbird, the all I need. I, I think I had I think I had the Mad you know behind both of them. But yeah, I really like this Redbird. So yeah, I just wanted to I just want to throw that out there. And uh, yeah, Neil, what do you think? Oh yeah. <clears throat> Ryan, so since we didn't actually get to watch this show, or I never yeah. actually watched it, um, so Rick was playing the the Deluise guitar throughout this yes. whole entire show, right? Yes. And so D touched on the fact that there was like Harry Hood tones to the Madavon there, and this is like I think an opportunity to note that that can only be done with that guitar and not 
the PRS, I think, to some degree or another. It just gets like just enough noise in it that it makes it sound, I don't know, it makes it sound hood-like. I feel like, like it's it just, not really totally in the tone. I think it's just where the jam goes. Yeah, no, but I think if you like <laughs> listen to the parts that Dee's like pointing out, at least the, the parts that I'm thinking of, mm-hmm. like it just gets like just noisy enough that the, the notes kind of blend together a little bit and just, I don't know, it sounds really cool. I, I do like this Madavon. I, I thought it was really awesome when I heard it. And um, I, I don't know if he can do that with the PRS, but I could be wrong on that. But pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. There we go. What about the rest of the set? Got any other thoughts to share? Or uh, man, no, not really. I mean, this Redbird also very good, but like, it, I, I don't know. It's just, it's it's All a right. Redbird. I think there's like a Redbird I'm more stoked about on this yeah. this tour. And then um, you know, Western Sun Empress of Organos. I mean. We should have seen this Western Sun coming, right? <clears throat> like it's that go everywhere, feel everything. You know, it's see everyone. Europe, yeah, it was, it was meant to be done. Eat, eat uh, all the, the first hot show dogs. of the tour. Yeah. Well, uh, let's uh, let's head to Germany. Anta Aleman. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I have that one right. Yeah, so we get November fourth, Goose at the Luxor. It's Goose, really? Ooh. Goose at the Luxor, Luxor. in. Cologne. Sorry, you're American, this is goose, or goose in a shoebox. Cologne. 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 Yeah. Cologne. Like, like, like B said it. Um, so you get a Atlas Dogs opener into Jive One. Ooh, dogs. Butterflies. Rockdale. Echo of a Rose. Born into Tomorrow Never Knows. This is this is actually like a pretty exciting show. Well, actually, before I even say that, Kev. Yo. We should talk about this a uh, guy who really likes merch. This is the coolest poster of the whole entire. Was this tour. this is the one with the sun it. or the moon? No, yeah, that was Brussels, wasn't it? No, it's this one where it's like seventies, like I don't know, like kind of weird, like desert theme art. Ah. I don't know. It's it's yeah. awesome stuff. Yeah. It's really really good stuff. This was the only one I tried to get actually. Yeah. And I, I, I get actually, it. since but we're yeah, talking about was, posters, this one was sick. these these actually are starting to go. land here, right? Uh, and Neil, you ended up grabbing one of these, correct? I did. I was lucky enough to get one. I'm sorry, Garrett. If you're re- if you're hearing this, you I people in the states taking away our posters. well, they sold them online. So, and if they didn't want us to buy them, they shouldn't allow <laughs> allowed us to buy them. Put out uh, the bat signal. But, we were talking. We're you still, but it's but you fault. still made the choice Absolutely. to buy yeah. it. Yeah, because it's a fucking sick poster. <laughs> <laughs> like hell yeah, I did. <laughs> but no, we were talking about at the time, Neil, uh, and we're getting kind of nerdy into poster stuff, which is getting off the the point of why we're doing this. But hey, just really quick, Kev, yeah. this is important sure, to sure. you, and so it's. Yeah, really we got plenty of time. <laughs> You had mentioned getting the paper variant, and we talked about this at the time that I didn't even try for the foil because I preferred the paper one the way it looked uh, at the time online. And you're always kind of rolling the dice like, hey, I hope it turns out you know, well in terms of aesthetic and how it looks. And I'm seeing some of those foils land. Uh, we get to see them in you know, the mini mall goose print collectors and so on and so forth. And I'm very happy that I ended up getting the paper instead of the foil. Long story short. Listen, I agree. if you're ever in doubt mm-hmm. about whether to get paper or foil, ask Kev. Yeah, I'll give you yeah. my advice, my opinion. It ain't always... Which is get the paper. Yeah, I mean, B, B, <laughs> B all, uh, will tell you that it's not always right. You know, I, I misfired on the Indian River pins. <laughs> now I own that, you know. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> so uh, two set cool. highlights here that I want to talk about in yeah. the, the show. Echo of a Rose, short, but very, very good, in my opinion. And then that's actually indicative of what we get through this this tour. We get a lot of short, but really not a lot of, but we get a couple short, but very hot Echo of Rose. Micro Jam? Oh, man. Micro Jam. Yeah. I mean, if you're, 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 yeah, you're watching along, you're listening along. Uh, every time we say the word Micro Jam on this podcast, Fuck. this particular podcast, just take a drink because it's going to happen a lot. Jesus. Thank mm-hmm. you for the sound effect. Because... Mm, frothy. Uh, that was nicely done. I really do <sighs> like that. So, yeah, you get this Echo of a Rose, and this is like the jam meat of this. Set. I mean, I guess the Rockdale's pretty good that comes before the Echo of a Rose. And then you get this Born with a Born jam, right? Some people might call it the 2001 jam. Some people Faster really... Faster Born jam. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty good. And then kind of somewhat transitions into... We give it a full arrow on that, but somewhat transitions to 
uh, Tomorrow Never Knows. I don't not like the that smoothest tone transition. there, buddy. It's not the smoothest yeah, transition. Error, That's what I'm though. saying. It was like, there. I mean, it was a, you know, it was a your, segue. Your choice is your it choice. Was a segue. I, yeah, it was there. I see. Th- this is, yeah, th- this this one is at least okay. I see a lot of questionable. <laughs> Full carrots. Segue oh, yeah. Full <laughs> carrots instead of half <laughs> carrots. Well, hey, listen. We have a we have a very we we have a we have an open door policy to uh, criticism and uh, feedback. Uh, so please, if you have a, a problem with a full arrow designation, like bring it to our attention. Uh, Neil and I and the rest of the Elgoose.net team will ignore it. Be happy to address. We'll be happy it. to ignore it. <laughs> well, I think I think Neil himself has brought you his complaints. And I mean, yeah, but I don't really care thing, about right? Neil's complaints. I care about what the community yeah. says. That's yeah. not what the community yeah. says. No, well, <laughs> no, I mean, no. Neil represents. Kev's got his finger on Neil the pulse. Neil represents the community. <laughs> to be honest, it is a Falero. It's just not the smoothest of segues. That's all I'm trying to say. It's all but it's Falero. Falero. Yeah, I mean, it didn't need to be like forced in, but it just kind of happened that way. I think, I think you find yourself in a spot, and then like you're just like, we're playing this tune no matter what, and then they just landed it, and it was cool. It was pretty good. Yeah, I would have liked to see Born get a little more exploration. You know, we we've, we've seen so many jamless Borns recently, um, and this one I was so excited because they actually had a little bit yeah. started jamming it. Yeah. Um, and like, yeah, the Tomorrow Never Knows cover is great. It's a great cover, but really would have liked to see the Born develop a little bit more. You know, we talked about a lot like the big Borns from earlier this year. Um, you know, looking for. Yeah, you know, a little more Madison. like those, yeah. uh, you know, coming back out of that song. It has so much potential. Eugene, Madison, Louisville, Louisville even Philly, like these big borns, lots of exploration, um, you know, and so hopefully that comes back uh, soon. Yeah, and I agree with Neil. This echo is excellent. Uh, it gets into some cool spaces. And it's also interesting to note this is a very rare, unfinished version of echo. Uh, only the third recorded unfinished echo ever. You know, that usually they'll bring it back you're saying. later yeah, in the yeah. set if it yeah. doesn't, you know, yeah. get finished right out of the initial jam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But th- this one, you know, they never come back to it. I was expecting when it went into Born, uh, you know, being unfinished, I was expecting um, the ending to definitely come back at the end of the sick. set later in the yeah. show because uh, they do that a lot, but it didn't. Um, and <clears throat> I would also like to apologize for neglecting to note the unfinished at the time. Uh, you know, I was enjoying what... No Colm has to offer. Um, and I was not on the top of my Congrats game. on the sex, uh, right? Bob's. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think he was talking about uh, beer. Croissants. Kebabs. Yeah. Kebabs. yeah. Pastries. Kebabs. And, yeah. Yeah. Congrats, Congrats on, on the <laughs> that's, that's, that's Congrats half. on the schnitzel, buddy. Yeah, we saw, we saw a lot of, I mean, throughout the tour, um, kind of a lot of the opening songs highlighting maybe the first three or four songs of the night and um you know we got that with atlas jive butterflies all all songs that can open a show and uh so so it sort of set the tone i think for the as uh our guy neil termed you know just euro goose rock and roll like it was they they were coming hitting songs playing type one in terms of those approaches, sort of those opening show songs to sort of set the tone in, in the shows. And, um, you know, the Rockdale short punchy, like we saw a lot of these efficient micro approaches to these types of songs and, and the echo, the Rockdale, the born, it all was sort of such that, that, you know, we were, we, we, we saw we were getting, and we didn't know yet, of course, but, 12 to 14 minute sort of songs that can go 20 minutes that were just being kind of cut. Um, I liked it. I thought the born too. Some, some describe yep. those as micro jams, yep. Yep. micro jams. And, um, and, uh, and so I think it was, it, it, you know, yes. Bummer that born didn't maybe get extended. Echo didn't get finished. I think this is a great set. Like if I'm looking at these songs as a whole, uh i i like this set as a construction like if i saw this in a full band show all for it you know so it's um or in terms of a little oh, bit yeah. more more length yeah. in a u.s show potentially but um yeah like neil said echo short and sweet born didn't get where we wanted but still kind of found some good space and um 
they kept those covers going too, like one per set, one per set, you know, sort of kind of getting the touches, I think, for anybody new that was there and also just keeping the energy. So um, fun, fun set. Uh, I, I liked it. Um, got some goodness in the second too. Anybody else? And the, yeah. yeah. And the Beatles are from there. Why, why not yeah. play it there? Yeah. Fantastic German sense. band. <laughs> yep. Right. Shiny happy, uh, shiny all right. happy people is a great song by oh, the German love that Beatles song. band. <laughs> huge, huge fan. So if nobody has anything else to say about set one, I'll move on to set two. But I want to add like a note uh, before I finish because one thing I wanted to say about that Echo of a Rose is that if you you really hone in on Trevor, and this is one of the the finer instances of Trevor's playing, does an amazing job of building tension. Uh, on the bass, which is like not a thing that like he typically does or really not much on this tour, but I thought his bass playing was really, really, really cool on this song. So just a, a thing to note before we move to set yeah. two. All right. So set two, this is this is where it's at in Colm. This is there's some good stuff here. So we have an unfinished <laughs> mist, which Sorry, we love. Neil, but before you go, I would just like to uh, note uh, that you got the patented Jive Goose scoff. Uh, it, it happens a lot. Uh, but you know the people at home can't see that, and I would just like everybody to know that the Jive Goose scoff happened uh, when Neil said that. Well, when I was talking about that's actually why that's actually why I don't say anything audibly, Ryan, is because yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I had to call attention to it anyway. It would, not it's, like, it would, it's like a so seal of disapproval. It would slow everything down. What on Trevor's playing in that Egg Over Rose? Is no, that no, 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 no. About about this yeah. set having good yeah. stuff in it. There is good stuff in this. I know there is like, good I stuff. I will die I'm on this. Bad. Bad. When I say it, when I, I hear when I hear things like everybody's playing tight, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, Neil. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so let me do this again because th there there is good stuff in this. Tempe. Set. So you get an unfinished miss already. Jive hates this set. It doesn't matter what they play. I mean, you know, like 40 minutes. It's not true. Echo Dragonfly Rose, is excusable. Finish. You know that'd be great. But no, so we get an unfinished mist into the hottest Mosque Nada of all time. Yep. The goat. Acceptable. <laughs> goat. And it's it's an amazing jam. It is. It's really Never good. Never did you yeah. think that you would be saying this is the goat Mosque Nada? Well, if you listen to is. things I say about Mosque Nada on this podcast, you would I don't. not be surprised. Historically, I love this cover. It's one of my favorite goose covers. It's a weird cover to have as your favorite goose cover. I totally agree with that if that's what you think but i love it and this one goes completely off the rails i mean it's angular and weird and scary and dark and just chaotic everything about it is just awesome and this is the, set, this is the kind of this is the set neil where uh rick switched guitars right he, he goes to the prs in the set yes he does yeah. where does he switch right second set I, I don't remember where in the set he switched. I, it may have just been the whole set, but I know he was playing the PRS yeah. by right in the set. So in any case, Mosquenata, really, really good. Ripper. Um, one of the, the better micro jams of this tour, in my opinion, because it does a thing that like you don't usually get. And these are the kind of things that I really hook onto and really enjoy. So... Okay, we're going to get past the second song of the set here and go on with the set. Mas came mas. So you get an especially hot, hot tea. And this one is going to get some sneers too. I, I really like this one. And there are a bunch of really good hot teas on this trip. I think we could all be there a are. little bit hot teed out. And I, I think I was in that same situation when it first started. Uh, but I quickly converted to, hey, I really like this hot tea. I like. I think hot tea is like a like a like a top five song on this tour and that's going to piss some people off and i'm just going to say it i'm just glad he's muted uh, i'm just glad he's are we muted listening to this same tour? i'm just glad he's muted yeah <laughs> uh encore that so, shit man i i really wish yeah i really wish we could all take a few minutes and come up with our top five songs of the tour just to see how many would have on <laughs> i think it's yeah. one <laughs> okay i mean like i mean take a minute and think about it um ryan's going to talk for at least seven minutes soon so you can take that time to think about your top five songs of the zing. Uh, all right. So and then you get uh, your ocean to cool down from that extra hot, hot tea, uh, which Ryan claimed they did not earn for the record. I think this is no, the hot tea. But it was, was awesome. That was the unearned uh, your ocean. 
And then Arrow to close out. Arrow is Arrow. You know, some might say, uh, you know, when looking at the the three Arrows played in Europe, that one of them is the hottest. Uh, and some might say that they were all solid, if unremarkable, Arrows. Um, but th- this set was interesting, uh, you know, because especially like, you know, we had a really strong show in Paris, really good first set here uh, in this sweaty shoebox uh, in, in Cologne. You know, it Cold. was a tiny venue. It was packed in Cold. like sardines, very narrow. You could barely see the band from the back. Like, it, you know, sight lines weren't great. It was hot in there by the second set. You know, Jeb had taken off his shirt. Um, you know, the band, the band was drinking. We were drinking. It was a, it was a really interesting vibe. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, but so they go the unfinished, the unfinished mist uh, into this Masquerada, which is weird. I still don't know whether it's the band or the crowd that's making yelping noises uh, in this jam. It sounds like Peter, but it also sounds like there are a lot of people doing it. Um, and you know, obviously the ba- the crowd is close enough to the stage um, where you can hear things like that happening. Um, yeah. If only we could ask somebody who was there. Well, I wasn't close enough to the stage to to know. I'm not I'm not the kind of person that goes up that close, Neil. You know that. There's like 400 people at the show. It's not like you were that far away. There were like 300 people at this show. And okay, I was so... based on how narrow this venue was, I was a lot further away than at, at some of the other ones. Um but this Mascanado was fun. Uh and then this hot tea, I mean it was your for me being there, it was your usual they're going to play hot tea for a while. It's going to be a party. It's going to be fun high energy, but I I don't really get the hype around this tea. You know, people have been talking it up since it happened to me. It's just like your, you know, amazing it, exuberant party jam, but it's but, not that it's not that it's like sludgy and slow. Mm, it does something that like most teas don't. Do. Oh, there it is. Neil. I love that. Um, it, it, I, it, it is all, an actually take really a good jam. Can we all take a moment to say that Neil thinks that I'm the biggest fluffer on this podcast. No, I, I mean, as far like, as I'm tea, as far as teas tea, go, it's a like, good tea, man. Oh, it's, it's an it's above a average tea, tea for sure. Like I, I won't accept that it's standard. Cause it's not, I did, sorry. Like, there, I didn't there's something mean that different it was about standard. This it's yeah. when you get an outside the box tea, when you get an above average tea, it's similar to what this one is in my opinion. Yeah. It's above average. I'm not saying this is and like, then, I mean, you know, yeah. You know, in the moment I said that the erosion was not earned. Um, I think, on Relisten, it's a little bit more earned than I think it was. Uh, I think I was being a little bit too harsh uh, in the moment. But again, just like the Western Sun in Paris, you get this moment of people shut up, people appreciate one of like th- this might be my favorite Goose Ballad. Um, I absolutely adore this song, always have. Um, but you know, it was it was great. And then Arrow to close it out. You know, they started it. I was like, you know, fits the vibe of this show. Let's clear that off the table. Uh, you know, nice hot arrow. And uh, we were out of there at 930 so they could have a disco. Yeah, let B chime in on this <laughs> tea, man. Just a couple things. So this is an acceptable unfinished mist because the Masquerade is so good. So no problems there. No problems there. But just a reminder, though, you know what I mean? It's like... Uh, I finished like half the miss at least. You know what I mean? Like at least every other yeah. one, I would say. It, it, would fe- be a good it feels time. really good to you know get I mean? to completion, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It all, yeah. You're right. You're I right. like finishing. Um, you know? It always has, you know? I like um, finishing too. And then the other thing is that, and I, you know, I don't want to be critical of my fellow <clears throat> pods. Yes, people, you do. But I don't. It's it's not in I guess it's maybe it's just not in my nature to to say that the band has earned the right to play something. So I always I always kind of I always kind of giggle a little bit at that at that idea of whether or not something is earned, right? And I know where you're coming from with it, but I kind of feel like you know, play play your ocean, you know what I mean? You don't have to earn it. Like play not alone. Well, I mean, yeah, play not alone. Not alone is earned wherever the hell you play it. Well, so yeah, so I guess you could say that about a lot of stuff then, right? Um, But anyway, I digress. Uh, I think uh, I think that this band has earned 
uh, just about everything they do yeah, at this point. Absolutely. Right? I'm just being uh, a nitpicky because, cranky because it's a fan. slippery slope. It's a Ryan. It's a slippery slope. <laughs> if they didn't earn your ocean, then did they earn the right to play with Trey? <laughs> what, are earn that? Yeah. Or, what are you saying? I mean, I'm just Where saying. Are you going? Like, I'm just. Do yeah. you have one too many hits saying. off of your pen? Like, what? What is happening? No, they earn. No, what I'm saying is that it because there's people out there that say, well, they haven't earned like their the spot that they've. I'm pretty risen sure I'm to. the only one that's. You know what I mean? Like they didn't earn it. Oh yeah, it's all being right? facilitated uh, behind the scenes. About. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So that that that's all I mean by that is like, uh, careful with talking about yeah. how they didn't earn something because you know that can really feed into this kind Narrative. of negative. Yeah. you know, perspective of them Thanks not for, kind of earning their, their way. You know what I mean? Like an asshole. Like, what? <laughs> what? Well, no, we're not, we're, nobody's, nobody's trying to do that. <laughs> you know, we're just trying to have, you know, just <laughs> constructive dialogue. Most, you know what I mean? This might be the most off the rails pod that we've ever done. I don't know. Uh, well, we'll see. I mean, we've got 10 more yeah, shows. We got, yeah, so, right. We got, we got time. Less than two shows <laughs> Now that now that all said, you got to cast uh, your I, I didn't feel like this arrow. I didn't. I didn't feel like this arrow. Was <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So the payoff is worth no, it. We're kidding. <laughs> Ditto. Ditto. Jesus yeah. Christ! All right, great. Ditto. This, the Ditto. Moshke Nada was really good. That Moshke Nada is really good. I, I will. It's like I will reiterate that. Yeah, but arrow. I got you back on that. That was. Whew. That was a hell of a punchline, D. Uh, that's masterful, actually. Anyone I'm, else? Anyone else I'm want to talk about this set? What else can be said at this well, point? Let's I, move I on. I don't know. Was was, was was the mist opener? Ditto. Oh, Jesus. Ditto. Never. Always, yeah. always fantastic. Did, was the mid set T earned? D. Did he ass? <laughs> <laughs> we already got that. All right, <laughs> let's uh, let's go let's to Amsterdam, it. shall Oof. we? Let's do it. Why not? So after the first two shows, the two we had two nights Milk. off in Amsterdam, Milky Way, uh, which you know we did nothing exciting. We were in bed at eight thirty every night, Milky Way. Uh, yeah. You know, resting up for the shows. You know, keeping ourselves in good shape. You were in bed responsible, at hydrating lots. Oh, of yeah. course, we drank lots of fluids. Yeah. Oh yeah, never left the show either. No, the the first night we were in Amsterdam, actually, I never went to bed. I went to bed two different times. And then went back out <laughs> from bed because somebody was like, hey, come meet me here. And I was like, okay. I don't think that we want to hear about how many times you bedded <laughs> while you That's were in not... Amsterdam. And who's paying for I all I thought this? that was an evening after your show. I'm not, I'm not like suggesting me. I'm not suggesting that you're paying for the bedding. Yeah. yeah. What? Milky Way. No. Milky no. Way. By, by bed, I mean... They, Day after <laughs> getting into bed in the Airbnb to go to sleep. Oh, okay. And then got a text from, say, Haps at two o'clock in the morning, oh. being like, We're at this bar. You should come meet us. Oh, okay. And then getting out of bed and walking to said bar. I had a totally so, different like, picture in my head. Yep. Yeah. Yep, so did B. When he's saying 8 o'clock, 8.30 p.m., he's saying 8.30 p.m. Pacific yeah. time. No, I was which, also, you know, I was, yes, ex- thank you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. So four in the morning. Um, local <laughs> no actually it was it was more like like 10 p.m pacific time yeah. but anyway rob and lisa don't uh, listen to this do they uh, rob and lisa I, I actually told lisa about it the other okay. day and she was like i'm glad you didn't tell yeah. me while you were in amsterdam yeah. and i was like there's a reason for yeah. that <laughs> um anyway so we're here at the Melkweg, the the Melkweg ode zao uh this is the the smaller room uh at the Melkweg. you know it was funny because <laughs> The, the act playing the bigger room, you know, they're like kind of one entrance, but there are two sides and two separate lineups. And the act playing the main room had like, you know, a pretty small lineup before. And the goose lineup was like uh, around the corner and down the block, um, which was pretty funny. This place was packed. This is definitely of the first three venues. Like this is probably probably the worst experience because while Cologne was super, super packed a little bit further back in the venue, there was some space. You know, the bar was easy to get to. You know, the vibe was still good. This was, like, packed in, like, sardines. Uh, you also had, uh, you know, some Billy Strings fans. Uh, you know, Billy was doing two nights in Amsterdam, and some of them opted to do one Billy and one Goose because Billy played the night before. Um, there was definitely a different energy here. Felt more like an American show, you know, 
lots more chomping, uh, and I'll get into that later in the set. But uh, this may have been Getty's best performance of the tour, but Getty was just on fire the entire tour. You know, I I don't think we've talked about that yet, and I would just like to shout out Getty. DJ Arnold. Holy shit. Um, You know, what he was doing in some points in this show and the the whole tour. Yeah, and we had DJ Arnold opening up, uh, you know, guy off to the side with some turntables before the show and and, and at set break. That was pretty great. You know, he had an Instagram post a day later. Um, and, uh, it was, he, I, I forget what he, how he described goose, uh, but it was pretty good. Uh, but they come on stage here. Uh, first set, we've got Dr. Darkness switching for Neil, Cali magic, Whoops. Wisteria, electric Avenue, everything must go pancakes. This was an awesome set. Uh, That's you know, it. they come on for Dr. Darkness and normally when they start playing the Dr. Darkness intro, you know, you can tell what it's going to be. Cause you know, they're all just kind of like mashing, you know, notes and it's all dissonant, whatever. But they came on in Amsterdam, and they built this beautiful, like, psychedelic soundscape instead, which I I didn't know what song it was. You know, I, I was like, like, maybe they're just doing, like, a little jam before they get into it. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I, I was lucky enough to get to chat with Peter a little bit after the show here. Um, with, shout out to Biblos uh, across the street. Um, but That sounds Greek. Um, it was the name of the bar. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds um, Greek. It sounds Greek. It may have been. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but this Dr. Darkness intro, Peter said that they decided like right before they went on stage, they were like, let's do this a little bit differently nice. uh, than normal. And I love this. I would love to see more of that. Uh, but it was it was clear from the jump uh, that there was, you know, some some other forces at play uh, with the band uh, at this show, you know, being being in Amsterdam and all. Um, you know, I, I said to I said to our, our friend Chip. Um, you know, I've never seen Rick look at his guitar the way he was looking at it during his Dr. Darkness solo. Um, then they go into switching super, super hot. You know, the sound in this room was phenomenal. You know, it was small. We had a speaker pointed right at us. Everybody was crystal clear. Trevor was shaking the floor. Uh, so shout out to Loomis as well, uh, for making it sound amazing, uh, the whole tour. But so we get switching super hot tally magic. You know, solid wisteria. We get our first big jam. You know, twenty minutes. You know, we get a nice type one peak, and then Rick just leads us into the bliss zone, and it's just like a peak for several minutes. You know, upbeat, joyous, happy, awesome jamming, uh, and then we land in Electric Avenue. Which at first I was like, we just got a Wisteria Electric Avenue in Fort Collins. You know, they're playing this right. cover a lot this year. Um, and so I was initially a little bit disappointed, but then this jam, I was blown away aside from the fact that every person in the room started having a conversation during this jam. It was so cool. They basically did Eugene Bourne levels of patience and quiet and texture. I love Matt Damon. Um, and we got a patented jive goose, uh, scoff going on in the background there. Um, but I was blown away by this jam. You know, it, it's 10 minutes long and it's really, really cool. Uh, and I, I'm, you know, I'm hoping we see more of this kind of exploration from them going forward. Everything Must Go was also a big statement here because we saw that that new jam segment that they debuted at Red Rocks was going to continue being the jam segment of this song. Uh, you know, we'll see a better one later on in the tour, uh, but this one uh, was excellent. Uh, and then Pancakes... You know, Rick was, you know, on fire in Amsterdam. And this one, uh, you know, the jam that happened coupled with Getty's lights, it felt like you were on like a runaway freight train, uh, you know, like barreling through like twists and turns and dark tunnels, going off the rails, like, like on all the back sorts of crazy room? stuff. Uh, but the, the set was <laughs> awesome. Uh, sponsored by uh, something like that. Maybe on the back of a spritz. I don't know. Ryan has a lot of pent up unspent pod. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yes. Energy rate. Right yeah. <laughs> Lot to make up for. <laughs> yeah, there, there were there were a couple of pods that I made it yeah. for. We're, we're uh, getting a pod. We're getting a pod dump Amsterdam right now. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Reboot. Jeff. So this is the third show in a row where songs start a little bit different. So when I listen to this Doctor of Darkness, what I hear is seven two six. Yeah. Like definitely, it almost sounds like they're starting this show with seven two six, would which would be insane, right? I mean, I, like. 
I couldn't imagine them starting a show with 726. Cool. And then one thing I forgot to mention about Colm. Colm? Well, well done. Colm. Is the Jive 1 that they played in that show totally sounded like a Jive lead. Yes. Because they, they started that completely different. And I still maintain, despite criticism from all four of you, that that... Me and my uncle also started hey, different. No, so you're it's getting not. just because it's I hummed it wrong. Different approaches. Give up. Started yeah, you're different. Wrong. I'm not giving up on that. I said I will it started on that different. Hill. I just hummed it like, like <laughs> Mississippi. <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> All right. Talk about the Amsterdam first set, please. Yeah. So so let's talk about this. So this Doctor Darkness doesn't start with the weird dark Doctor Darkness start, right? It starts with like this beautiful intro. So that is a really cool way to start this set. And then you get a switch in that is especially hot. My first one. I was very excited. Uh, yeah, I've never seen You one, don't love that song. That kind of song. Um, switch in? As much as I love that song. You've never seen a switch in? I've never seen a switch in. Uh, uh, even deal. though it's kind of become synonymous with me. B, um, B didn't we get one of those so in our first show too? Or was that at Cervantes? Well, and you got one at Dylan. I thought yeah, yeah, show, yeah, show number two, and then I got one two yeah, before yeah. two. Yeah, Screw you guys. yeah it, it was it, it was different times, you know, different times. Yeah, but so this wisteria to to kind of not to disagree with Ryan, but I I think what kicks off this amazing jam that is so triumphant and glorious is not Rick, but it's the drums. The drums really get underneath this and make this whole jam lift off. And this is one of my favorite jams of the tour, like not like top one or two or three, but still one of my favorite jams of the tour. I absolutely love it. And they find a vibe somewhere in this that continues into this Electric Avenue. And it's just the Electric Avenue is so airy. And I don't know, it, it, it's something about it that I absolutely love. And I don't have the vocabulary to say what I love about it, but it's it's absolutely killer and then it's just like one thing after another you just get like excellent jam after excellent jam after excellent jam yeah like are these all timers you might challenge me on that and say no they're not and certainly they're not but these are very good jams this is a very good set i do like the back half of this everything must go it's not as good as the everything must go that comes after this um, but still very, very good. And also a very good pancakes, not as good as the pancakes that comes after this. Yeah, yeah but it's a good, solid, all good stuff. Like it's solid one of the best and vocabulary to describe all of that. I think you did a good job. Yeah, I think it's one of the best uh, sections of, and then he leaves, but it's one of the best <laughs> sections of <clears throat> music throughout the tour. I think it's sort of like a, the back to back to back four songs in a row. It's like almost 50 minutes or so, 60 minutes. Um, I really like this this latter half of the set as well. Um, I think that the wisteria we get later too goes into some different spaces, but sort of as a as a whole, the wisteria Electric Avenue had very similar vibes. This one may be one of the most cohesive out of the three actually that we've seen lately. I think um, just in terms of the the, the jams together uh, that they have, the way they approach it, and um, yeah, short, sweet, everything must go. Same thing with the pancakes, both done better later this this tour. But yeah, I liked it. You could tell, and then yeah, just just set the tone. Fun set. We found some some coins in the second. So yeah, I think this is the uh, this is what we're always talking about with Electric Avenue. Like this is these are the types of jams. You know, I think of Electric Avenue. Oh, you do as having the same kind of jam potential as inside out mm. like i think they both it just plods. slide it plods, really nicely dude, into, yeah. a, into a, a, just a nice groove that can kind that can kind of just go anywhere yeah and then it can kind of just go anywhere um but yeah this is this is a hot set this is a hot hot set uh big fan of the wisteria like you guys electric avenue yep everything must go all right pancakes I think some people, I think we talked about this before, but I think some people were really up on this pancakes yeah. talking about, is it, is it salt shed level pancakes? And it's not, it's not, but, but it's really good. And what I like about this pancakes and this wisteria is that, um, you know, you just get, you just get just downright shreddery from Rick. And, and I love that. And I love, I love the, I love the jams that go really out there and 
you know, get quite do all these things. But I also just love when when Rick is just going off and kind of felt like he did that a couple of times during this set. So. So, yeah, this is this was a really good set. Um, and in fact, I think this is a really good show. I've got it as a, this is my number four show. There you go. Of the Europe tour. So, so yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Top, uh, you know, top third. Yeah. Um, so he's easily. So at set break, uh, you know, good friend of the pod, Haps, popped across the street. For a quick beer. Uh, you know, go, go hang out uh, yeah. at, at the bar. He, he made it back around halfway through yeah. Silver Rising. Grab a, uh, shout out to Haps. Grab a leader. Uh, for the good call. Um, you know, we <laughs> the rest of us did not. Um, but so they come back with Silver Rising here. Love that in the, yeah, in the second yeah. set opening slot, uh, honestly. You know, the, this song works pretty much anywhere in a show. Um, but it felt good there. Um, and then you get Thatch. You know, I think we knew that was coming in Amsterdam. Um, you know, it, it absolutely crushed here. And just like, you know, talking to the Electric Avenue, how it was like quiet and, you know, you know, patient, the the thatch, the initial jam, they just really stripped it back. And it's all about the rhythm mm-hmm. section early on. Uh, you, you know, you have Spud's popcorn snare, which is really punching through the mix uh, in the room. Trevor just holding it down, playing these very subtle yet very impactful uh, like notes like burning, you know, um, and Peter. Peter's clav decides yeah. uh, it wants to uh, be a Mario game. Level <laughs> and up. He picks up some coins. <laughs> yeah, up some coins. Ooh, mushrooms. Uh, Peter said to me. Peter said to me in London um, that after after this uh, <laughs> potent, potent fruiting bodies. After this after this jam or after this show, like he could have gone and gotten it fixed. Like he said, the issue was like it was or not an issue, but that the sound was created by. He was hitting one of the keys and it was like the hammer inside, like the, it, it was hitting like two notes at once um, or something. And he was like, I could have gotten it fixed, but I also really liked it. And it was, it was you know, it was a fun shtick. Um, and, you know, it'll pop up again in the other two thatches on the tour. And um, again, somewhere else. too. He remember. was like, he was like, he was like, you know, maybe I have to. Yeah, no. And he was like, maybe I have to get a sample of that for back in the States, <laughs> um, which I said yes yeah, uh, but this thatch is great you know you get the, these few minutes of exploration around the groove you know quiet funky and then they find the triumph they hit it you know huge rock peak um and back into the ending which was amazing feel it now um was made to be played in a oof, european club uh you know it was awesome peter's wearing those shades you know having a great time singing a song we were we were feeling it uh and then this hunger site you know, similar kind of off the rails themes yeah. to this pancakes very very short you know ends up going into animal but it's a it's a hot 12 minutes uh and it's worth a listen and then animal you know shorter than most versions uh very pleased to see just like emphatic exclamation point animal as opposed to you know 15 minutes of animal um but there are better animals on great way to end the show yeah. and you know felt like it was apt to be played in amsterdam the big thing to talk about in this set is the thatch, right? I think it was one of the most talked about jams of the Europe tour. And it's not just because of the coin sound, which is amazing. How dare you? It's actually incredible. If you, if you haven't watched the video when you're listening to this podcast, go watch the video of Peter, just his absolute joy. He's like a kitten that has found a ball of yarn. It is the most fucking like, it's adorable. Like, I mean, he's just so fucking happy. And like every time I, I watch it, it just makes me so happy. That's but Peter's, that was a really that's cool. That's like sense. Peter's general affect, man. I mean, he'll tell you what's in his <laughs> yeah, he'll, totally. he'll tell you what's in his backpack. <laughs> yeah, he will tell you what's in his backpack. But yeah, I mean, so that's not the only thing to talk about about this this thatch though. It is a very good jam. I, I enjoy the hell out of this jam. And yeah, and then the, you know, the feel it now that follows also very good. I was listening to that on the way home when I was driving home from work today and I drove way too fast. Way too fast. Oops. Way too fast. Autobahn. Way too fast. On Saltobahn. So no, really, really good version of Thatch and is the highlight of this. So wait, wait, wait. Were you driving too fast because of the Thatch or because of the Feel It Now? It was the the Feel It Now is what got me. I mean, the Thatch really got me in the mood, but you know, the Feel It Now is really brought it home. I was actually reminded of actually, yeah, it's funny. I was thinking about this when I was driving. There's like a, uh, 
I don't know, a, a, a copy of Doniak Schweiss, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, yes, the, the fish newsletter so. that used to come out in paper back in the day. And then one of the questions was, and one of these really early ones, like 1994 or so, uh, and somebody asked Trey, like, what he's listening to. And he's like, well, I'm listening to um, Medeski Martin and Wood, whatever that first record is. I can't remember the name of it. And he's like, I love it because it makes me drive too fast. And I thought of that as I was driving way too fast, listening to this feel it now. Is there something about like the, the hand drums in this that just make me want to just absolutely floor it? Hey, listen, there is no feel it now intro without <laughs> Jeff to go to sleep. Yeah. I love feel it now, man. Feel it now is probably my favorite Peter song. Yeah. I like it a lot too. Um, I agree. I think, yeah. The uh the yeah silver rising fits really well here, thatch. I think I agree though it can go anywhere in a show. It's like early in the first, late in the first. Like it can land whatever. That that song is very very solid. I can only imagine what the harmonies sounded like in a small space. Thatch was hot. Uh, set the tone for the tour for the song. It's just showing itself out this year, and you know we're probably primed for another one at Goosemas. Yeah, good set short and punchy but efficient and good i, I really liked it so ready to uh scandinavia mm, it up? Are, we, are we going to are we going to are we going to copenhagen da- copenhagen my, my favorite city of the, the tour. land of canals bicycles and very tall Free people man kev yes it's the land of kev nordic people my 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 four yeah my forerunners uh my well, my forefathers kev. and mothers Toyota it's only appropriate runners. that you tell us about this show. Well, let's right? get it going, man. Uh, if if we're going to open a show, why not do it with Flowdown? And uh, from there, we go to Indian River into Jive 2. Everybody's favorite cover, or at least mine, uh, will forever be since Eau Claire, the way it is, Bruce Hornsby cover. Uh, Earthling or Alien, and we round out that first set with a Yeti. Fun set. Uh, you know, this starts a run of two shows here uh, middle of the tour where there's not much in the way of, you know, big improv, but the band comes out on stage. They play two sets. The energy is sky high. The vibes are high. This venue was one of my favorites of the tour as well. It was basically like, like kind of like a ballroom basement, in the basement yeah. of a bar, which sounds like it would be, you know, bad, but it was actually awesome. Ceilings were high. There was plenty of space, little elevated area, you know, for people who wanted a better vantage. Uh, you know, big bar, lots, very easy to get drinks. And after Cologne and, or sorry, Cologne and Amsterdam, Cole. this venue was not oversold. Uh, there was plenty of dancing space, especially, you know, further back towards the soundboard. Um, so we, we had a great time. Uh, we, we had a great time here and, you know, just great city. Uh, but yeah, this set was great. Uh, you know, Indian River, we talk a lot, uh, B, especially about how, you know, you get the Delta Jam and it's 15 minutes of Delta Jam and nothing else. Um, and even when you get a version like uh, Madison earlier this year, it still has, you know, a really long period of straight Delta before it gets really good. And this one departs relatively quickly. I think it's around the 12 minute mark uh, that it starts to kind of break free, which is, first of all, a rare occurrence in itself. Uh, and so I was really excited about that. But this is a really, really solid jam. Uh, nice, nice upbeat themes in there. And otherwise, you know, I was super excited about my first way it is. Uh, you know, hadn't seen the song before. Uh, straight clav jive two. No, no organ solo happening in there. Ryan, have you seen um, Bruce Hornsby before? I've not. Okay. I would like just to. quick question. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. I, I heard a rumor that he's going to be a goose. Absolutely. So. Uh, I heard he's bunking with John Mayer, to be honest at with the you. Days in. Yeah. In the days in. Yeah. Yeah, so hot spot. You know, maybe maybe we'll catch that. Men of taste. Um, but otherwise, you know, the, when Yeti started, uh, I think a couple of us were talking about, you know, the last two Yetis that were played were Fox and Red Rocks, which both you know went outside the box, had these great jams. So we were hoping it would be something similar. We got a you know fun Peter guitar solo, uh, which is fun. Um, but uh, otherwise, you know, solid set again. Energy was high. Vibes were high. Yeah. I, I think the one thing I have to say about this set is on the, the back end of this Indian River jam, you get a very kind of indie rock jam, which I thought was pretty cool. Stepped outside of the, the Delta jam a little bit. And I enjoyed yeah. that because, you know, I love the indie rock. I mean, it's, it's no spoon, but 
I mean, it's good stuff. Thanks. R- really did did like that part. And then let's see here. So this is yeah, this Earthling or Alien in this set is really really good. Short, but the space that they find I think is pretty remarkable, and it's not nearly as good as the Earthling or Alien that they played at the Cap, which I really really love. But I mean, it gets to a pretty cool spot. And then Ryan, you were talking earlier about the fact that Peter was feeding one of the Nords through the Leslie. Yes. And I have to wonder if that's happening in this one because he's getting some amazing sounds out of the, I guess, what is that? Um, is it a Rhodes patch that he's playing on the? Yeah. So no, that, yeah. that was not going through the Leslie, but that was not his, his choice of Rhodes patch. Thank you for bringing that up. And I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I, I have no, to go ahead. on this. No, um, no. Cued you, that, that amazed me from the get go because before Peter had the vintage vibe, the patch that he was using on the Nord for all electric piano sounds was the Nord's Whirly patch, which I've always found to be kind of thin. You know, doesn't doesn't have a ton, a, doesn't have a ton of body, doesn't really cut through very much. Um, and he was for this tour, he spent more time kind of exploring the possibilities, and you know, went for one that actually sounded a lot like the vibe, very very full. Um, and I asked him, I was like, you know, is there a patch on there that's modeled after the vintage vibe? Like, is that what you're using? And he was just like, no, like I found one that, you know, I thought sounded good. And he did. And it's a success. Um, so, you know, shout out to the Rhodes patch he was using. Back to Yeah, so this, this is not a throwaway version of Earthling Aurelian, even though you look at it, and I think it's about 13 minutes. Um, that's purely off memory, though. I could be wrong. It'd be like 12 or 14. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, 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 it's just under 14, yeah. according to the Nugs, baby. Yeah, it's it's a good version. It is a really good version, and you wouldn't think that it was good, but you should go and listen to this one um, from the set. It's, I think it's actually the jam highlight of the set. There we go. Uh, set two. Anyone else got thoughts on this first set? set? Two. Or let's set two. Set two, us, Kev. Ditto. Let's do the set, set two, two, which opens with creatures. Yeah. Uh, Peggy O, Grateful Dead cover in the tumble. Legio. Legio. Do, 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 do. Uh, do seven, do, two, do. six. And everybody's, everybody, yeah, Mississippi uh, Peggio. Uh, and we round out the set here. No, no encores. This hasn't come up at all, huh? No encores. Uh, but we round out the second set here with uh, Primal Banger Dripfield. Kev, you got thoughts on this set? I have some thoughts. Uh, specifically, the thoughts that I have are about the Peggio. And yes. I want to bring up Haps, and I don't have his exact quote in front of me, but I'm pretty sure I have it off the top of my head. It has legs. And the quote was, you guys, Peggy O, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's a, a good song. song. So he... <laughs> that sounds like Haps. And so that's a full-throated endorsement. If Converted. You know Haps, uh, and how his former feelings... Yeah, he's a convert at this point, and that was a full-throated endorsement of Peggy O. Uh, not, not only its placement in the set, but I heard he's going to be requesting it. It shows that he attends from now on. And that's that's like saying that's like saying, "Hey, I, guess what, guys? Uh, as it turns out, I like <laughs> yeah, puppies. pretty much, man. <laughs> yeah, how could you not in the first place? Or or in a in yeah. a song yeah. sense, that's like me going to a show and asking them to play Seekers in the second yeah. set. Or yeah, I don't know. I don't think that analogy works. No, but, it does. Yeah, I don't it, know it, that. it actually it makes happy sense. birthday. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, that's nice. Hey, there was no second set. This, uh, so, but you yeah, know, the this creature creatures has, has a nice little. This creatures has a nice little jam uh, at the end as well. It does. It's hot. Uh, that's probably, you know, on paper, this is a yeah. hot set. It just it, it's all it's all really strong type one playing in this set. Um, you know, creatures is hot. Tumble is really hot. Dripfield's hot. 726 is beautiful, as always. Peggio is gorgeous. Um, and I'd like to shout out the one and only Rick Materatonda for possibly the best audible of all time uh, in this set. You know, Peggio was on the set list for Amsterdam. I'm sure they rehearsed it. <laughs> um, and then they came to Copenhagen. And on the set list, they were supposed to play Rock the Casbah uh, after, after Creatures here. And Rick decided in the moment that they were going to do Pagio uh, instead. Um, and shout out to Rick for the best audible ever. Just to underscore what Jive said, uh, 
there is a jam that comes in between kind of the typical creatures jam in this set. Yeah. And then another typical creatures jam that kind of finishes off creatures. But it's, <laughs> it's like super Radiohead sounding. And I, I absolutely love it. I think it, this is a pretty cool creatures because you get something that you don't really typically hear inside of that, even though you get two pretty familiar jams on either side of it. So creatures is a is a highlight here. And that's not a bad way to go. You get a creatures that's like kind of out of the ordinary. You get a Peggyo, you get an extra hot tumble. And then a seven two six drip field, killer set. That's Extra I mean, mustard, paper. Yeah. yeah, listen, yeah. your classic, your classic seven two six drip field. Classic. Classic. Yeah, I thought classic. the creatures. It's just the, the creatures. Songs just creatures. Uh, creatures did something. I mean, the Manchester one had a little extension on it too, sort of that was nice. It's cool to see them uh, taking that song a little bit. Um, yeah, great songs, great selection, solid. So. Um, yeah, I think uh, if anybody doesn't have anything else, we will head. Nah, man, let's go to Germany. Two. I realized I, I didn't even put that on, on the the next show. I didn't even put oh, it on yeah, the yeah. list. No, we got uh, it in the talk because I we forgot got it. about it. it. Uh, they played it. They played it at a hotel conference. Center, yeah. Uh, yeah, Marriott in in Wendell, Germany, yeah. <laughs> the Rolling Stone Beach. Uh, Rolling Stone, by, Stone yeah, Beach, great the, city. And, and by beach, that was my favorite had, album. Art hotel of conference the tour too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm down to do. I can do yep. back to back. The Wi-Fi here, so and got, the fax machines it, all checked out. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 tell, the, tell us what they play give here. It, give it. So we got power hour, sing, power hour single setter. We cook it. We, we cook it. And all I need, slow and melodic, followed by the whales. Arrow might have earned it. Arguably best one of the tour. Lead up and Arcadia. So um I will admit I have not some might say yes, I I I uh I've I've uh, heard the arrow through Neil and it's um <laughs> it's good. It's good. That's about it. So this was this was it's hot. Yeah, this, this was <laughs> one hot arrow. I would say Fio. the the biggest the biggest impact some a little of it. Go, go ahead, Ryan. You, you no, got no, something. No. What's the biggest thing? Please, please. No, yeah, yeah. Let's all just take this one off. We'll let we'll let we'll let Neil run with it. Oh, you want yeah, me to run with it? Yeah. Well, so I've got about I, I thirty minutes all, of yeah. notes here, um, which I promised Good. everybody on this one. Do you I do don't research actually, on the Marriott? <laughs> I don't actually have thirty minutes of notes. What? Um, no, I don't. I mean, this is the most. I, I don't know. This this is like a, a Spinal Tap moment. They are playing at the Rolling Stone Beach Festival, and then we get pictures from inside the venue, and it is a legit <laughs> fucking yeah. hotel continental ballroom. breakfast. Continental breakfast. Like, who the yeah. fuck made this festival? Yeah. And like, what happened? Yeah. It's like Firefest Europe, but like in the most yeah. fucked up backwards way that it could. I ever think there was be. an outdoor well, stage. I think there was an outdoor where, stage. Yeah, I was gonna say like, where were the Rolling Stone? Yeah, where yeah. were the Rolling Stones? No, this playing? is no, it was like Rolling, Rolling, Rolling Stone magazine. <laughs> oh fuck you! Dude. It's totally got faded by that. Rolling Stone. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh man! Listen, but like, where's I, the beach? Is the beach near beach. this location? We saw we saw pictures of a beach by some band members or crew members. I think also it's November. There was a mural and at the back the of the conference was center. Like, <laughs> chilly and raining and so like you don't want to be on a beach you want to be in a hotel conference center yeah. seeing an hour of goose um and i was gonna say the biggest impact it's like they were playing i the think this show had there. on the tour was eliminating lead up and arcadia from the rotation rotation until london which we were you know kind of dismayed about because we we did not go to this festival um you know given it was very out of the way you know, and only 60 minutes set. There were a couple people that went. Um, shout out, I'm blanking on the name right now, but shout out to the amazing fan uh, who was texting me the set list, uh, you know, while they were playing so we could have a live update. Um, but yeah, it was really, you know, we knew Arcadia was coming at this festival, but it was still a little bit sad because obviously, you know, we were, we were four shows in at this point and we had not seen Lead Up or Arcadia, uh, both songs that we wanted to see. Um, but, you know, Got it. Got to give the festival crowd the goods. It's not a bad miss. Well, and They're like the waffle machine was broke, I hear. So like, <laughs> fuck it, you know. 
<laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I think that uh, you know, I think it's sad that you know you didn't re- yeah, remember that dude's saying. name. You know what I mean? It's like, but you don't normally thank the band, even I guess after your set list. So I guess hey, it's like I do when I remember South Dakota. You know? And you're welcome to come. You're welcome to come back and do all the set lists, uh, B, because you have been known to pass it off to someone else when you're at a show. Um, some of us are committed. And when the other person, you know, has a job and can't yeah. run the set list in the middle of the afternoon, you yeah. know, we do it. Yeah, I can't come back right now with all these, uh, you know, crazy intros. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you don't even know what they're playing. You don't want to get hot You've had, you've done your, you've you done your I mean? seekers travelers yeah. time already. You know. Let's do it. Oh, uh, let, let's go to Berlin. Berlin. D. Uh, tell us about what happened in the sketchiest. Venue yeah. So uh, November eleventh, uh, Berlin at the Gretchen. We heard this was an old like Nazi sort of conference space and meeting center. So got another shout out to the crew here after schlepping it around Europe for a week in Mister Action, followed by a short and sweet Elizabeth. Uh, then time to flee, also punchy and good. Rockdale, writing a novel, and hot tea. So we got the little Chugal kickoff for what was to come. Um, Chugal party. Chugaling. I I really I like this set. Uh, Listen to this one live, walking around the city here in Milwaukee, and just nothing yeah. nothing crazy, but yeah, love and action opener. Elizabeth, like less than ten minutes. Talk about a micro jam, can we? Oh, Did you call that a micro jam? Business. Yeah. Business. Um, yeah, same go. thing. I thought the flea, honestly, too, like I'll take a 12 to 14 minute micro flea, like get in there, give a good piano, good solo out. Rockdale can be punchy. Um, then we had a nice little hot tea. Unfortunately, the stream was kicking out, but we were kicking it. I thought Did the you novel talk about was novel? good. Chugle it. Yeah, and man. Noveled. Yeah, chugle it. Yeah, yeah. he's and he's awesome. covering the set list, so you'll be able to dial and in. The, just the hot tea was a great hot tea <laughs> was a nice little uh, close the set that shit, as we said. As it were, Neil, I'd like you to go first here. Oh man, I, I think the only actually the only song I really want to talk about in this set yeah. is the time to flee. I like the flea which a lot. It's really good. It. No, I like actually this is the one T I'm not super stoked on on this whole entire tour. Oh. Out of the, what is that? The three that they played? Yeah. Um, but this this hot tea or this sorry, this flea. <laughs> time to flee. I got hot tea on the brain yeah. now. Hot um hot flea. This time to flee hot, flea, hot, has hot flea. you know hot flea. The, the kind of jam that you come to expect from time to flee. And uh, it was just really welcome at this point in the tour. It has that kind of like non-linear guitar soloing that Rick does. In this jam had some really nice like piano interplay with that. Um, Peter did a really good job, like just kind of laying under Rick's meandering guitar soloing and just adding tension. Uh, and just like there was like I don't even want to call them peaks. It was just kind of like swells in this jam that just sounded really good. And there there wasn't a gigantic peak in this, but it, it did kind of get up there a few M- times. Musical and, arcs. Know, it's just really nice. Musical arcs, if you will. Yeah, yeah, this kind of you know swells, yeah, as it were. But I mean, otherwise, I don't really, I don't know. Like, there's nothing super exciting no, it's about this set. Good set. I mean, I, of course, I like. I'm writing a novel because every time they play it, I, I absolutely love it. And of course, goes without saying, the Chugal Ryan Chugal uh, party. Chugal, Chugal fest. They kicked it oh, off. Yeah, it double Chugal in this set. Yeah. Yeah, Two thirds of the Chugal trifecta. The Chugal fecta, Neil, not the Chugal <laughs> trifecta. What are you saying? Two <laughs> words need to be saying one. Come on. Yeah, yeah what are sorry. You, what are you doing? I don't add use <laughs> to you words that don't oh, need about it either. It. Why? Okay, so, so th- this is a hot set. Similar to similar to the Copenhagen show, they came out here. They delivered two sets with very little outside the box improvisation. Lots of energy. Vibes were high. We were second row, right in front of Trevor for this show. Um, so it was really cool. Uh, Rick was playing a very dangerous game uh, with a pillar in the venue. Uh, it was like this close, like and nobody can see that. It was very close to his guitar, and we were very scared that he was gonna like knock it the whole time. Um, shout out to Rick for not knocking the pole with knock his guitar a single time. Um, 
You think you've been playing that instrument for a while? No, but like not, not, the guy has his eyes hole. closed and he's like vibing he back and forth there. while he plays. And so, like you know, maybe, maybe you know, you know you, pole, you hit pole it. awareness. Um, but the the club is actually a uh, Gretchen. Yeah. I I looked up on their website. It's in a heritage building from 1854. The former stables of the Prussian First Guards Dragoon Regiment of Queen Victoria of Great Britain and Ireland. Um, basically, okay. yeah. And then you know the way it is now, it's like a really yeah. sketchy looking building. Um, from the outside, inside it was pretty cool. It was packed in there. Um, you know, you got a nice disco ball for Getty to light up a little bit. Uh, but yeah, this was a good set. You know, some chuglin, some hot playing. Uh, some hot tea, you know, that's that's all, all right. right. Set two. Oh, so anyone got anything else yeah. to add? Or... <laughs> 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 so, uh, two. Set two. Set two. Uh, we got the first uh, slow ready into SOS, into Rosewood, into fifth of Beethoven. Shout out Katie for calling it out in Berlin. Had to happen. And another close the set that shit, Empress. Um, I think the only really uh, moment of note for me was the rosewood that went into fifth unfortunately kind of left the space could have gone there maybe not play beethoven and go longer on the rosewood but um yeah it just kind of was like a fun yeah. show maybe as a set but like nothing really standing out the rosewood was decent for me i always like it but yeah just just a sort of they were i think they were just kind of finding their groove at this point you know five shows in and or six shows in or seven whatever it was but yeah yeah. <laughs> I I did also yeah. forget to mention during Rockdale um <laughs> during Rockdale um I uh you know I was ready on the clav tweet uh and Peter happened to look in my direction while I was clav tweeting Did you lock eyes? And I we did and I did like I I like held my phone up and I hit the tweet button and he cracked up. He should have thrown um, you out. And it was funny. Yeah. He should have. Yeah. He should have. Um, let's talk about. Yeah, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to like. You're gonna have to quote tweet the cloud tweet yeah. with a lock eyes tweet. Oh, oh that's a lot of clam, in, clam inception. Man, you're gonna have so many. You're gonna. You're gonna have so many. We got clam. We got clam. Anyway, let's go to Brussels. Uh, wait, no, hold up. Before we go to Brussels, wait. I don't okay. want to move on from this set. Oh, I, I, oh thought, you don't? I thought you were gonna the comment on his clap. He caught the clap. I thought that's what you said. I, I think what? the rosewood's we, good. The rosewood's good. Yeah, let's talk about this rosewood. Drip drums. Rosewood. I mean, th this did. is killer. This is a killer rosewood. I mean, it's not an all timer or anything. It's no hosewood, but you get the drip yeah. drums. Ben killed in it this a, whole a tour, song man. that typically showcases the drums. Yeah, this this one's really good. That's the jam highlight of the set. And then the fifth of Beethoven, like Daniel said, cut, kind of cuts off the jam. You were expecting yeah. the second yeah. jam after this, right? I think we all were. And then you just don't get that. You get fifth, fifth of Beethoven, which I guess is fun. Clav. Yeah. I would imagine it's one yeah. of those things, and maybe even Ryan would disagree, cynical at uh, 17 years old that he is. Uh, but if you were there and you got fifth, fifth of Beethoven, you probably appreciated that. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I think just curmudgeons like myself would have loved to hear whatever they were yes. wave they were riding and I'm with in that you. rosewood. Yeah, and I'm with you there. And just like carrying it out. Yeah. That's all. Curmudgeons like yeah, Jack no, So No. No, yeah. it's, I'm no, I'm no, look, I agree with Neil as usual <laughs> as always. <laughs> it's uh You know what's what's funny is that this this is one of those shows where you know, the way my brain kind of you know looks at these I'm thinking Man, if you took out that yeah. fifth of Beethoven and just let that rosewood go, yep. and then and then maybe you let that flea yeah, go, don't. yeah, exactly, yep. Somehow, I don't know. You can cut whatever you want, really, out of that set. Uh, you know, maybe you cut the T, extend the flea, and then move the novel in front yeah. of Rockdale and then close the set. With in Rockdale. conclusion, I, but, but, but <laughs> my point is, writing goose set lists, <laughs> but. My, this, Goose, this, come on. What, this what, what, what I was gonna say is that this show was was that close to being like a I like this like a I top, like this top set. yeah show of this trying tour. to do, try you know what I mean on paper it is um, try, try, trying to do too yeah, much you think so uh, we, I we mean I don't know. So much, I, you know I think I, it did I what they intended that. it to I mean, do. I, and I think we should yeah, I, mean, I, I think, think we should move on to Brussels here. Brussels yeah 
Yeah, I mean they, they earned, earned that paycheck. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, they earned the when I hear when I hear good. people say that they've earned. B, why don't you why don't you take us into uh, my take birthday show here, the first one setter uh, headline show. Of the tour. happy birthday, Ryan. Happy oh, birthday. Oh man, well, I feel I, now I feel honored. You know, I, I feel like I'm I'm an honored, and my uncle. And yes. proud uncle. You know, more like more like a great uncle. Great city. City. From too Brussels. old to be an uncle. Great you're, you're a great uncle. I love Brussels. Bro. I do love Brussels. It's a great city. It's uh truly Belgium. is a great city. Love their chocolate. This is uh this was Monday. This was a Monday. Never miss a, so you know never miss a Monday strap show. In. Yeah, strap in. Yeah, strap in. Strap you know what else was a Monday? In. Mission night two. Much different. <laughs> so <laughs> is yeah. that where the equivalency ends? Yes. Oof. Oof. <laughs> So this was a one setter. Was this you? You guys didn't really know this was a one setter. No, we did. Though, until uh, I, I we, found out early late in the on, day, right? but then they they had announced it before the show. Um, I was I was upset because I found out after I put in my fantasy goose picks. Yeah, you told which us would early. have changed if I knew it was only one set. Yeah. Well, would 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 it? Would <laughs> yes, really actually, though? it would have. But thank you. Strap in, buddy. Strap in. Let's go. Yeah, uh, let's all strap in. So lead the way Hot opener. Green. That's that's okay, yep. you know. Uh, green River Chugle. completed. Chugle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you guys said. <laughs> like uh, animal. Oh man, the goat. <clears throat> Goats are animals. Really that's right. I actually let's come back to this animal. <laughs> Seekers. Part, parts one and two. Yes. Yep. Uh, another red bird. Another animal. Too. Inside another animal. out. Spoon. Where's there the spoon go. man he at? He can hear us, though. He He's not here. Spoon man. Hunger sight. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's on a delay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this old sea. Insert Kevin's hunger sight <laughs> comment. Uh, and so ready. So, you know, I mean, for a one setter. Uh, you know, this, this is okay. You know, I like the, uh, so you guys are going to talk all about the green river and, you know, maybe it's the best green Goat. river ever. I don't know. It's um, jam charted. That's all we know. But, but this, this is the best animal ever. Isn't it? I mean, another goat. I think, another goat. It's the only on one that? that's yeah, ever that's gone pretty... outside of animal. Well, it goes, it goes full Ted. Do you know what I mean? Like this it is... is the only animal I go back and listen to. We're not. You know, yeah, yeah, we're not getting a lot of TED jams, you know, really as much as I think we should. Um, I think we've, I think we've earned earned more TED jams, you know. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So we got, so we, so we got what what we deserved um, in this animal, and yeah, I mean, I don't know, it's like twelve or thirteen minutes in, it just pretty much goes full TED, and it's a beautiful jam. I mean, it's a really nice jam. Um, and then we, you almost get a little bit of a flow down studio, well, flow, studio down. flow down, vibes. <laughs> studio flow down. <laughs> well, oh, wow. I did not pick up on did, that. I did hear people say that, but did auto vibes to finish it off. So, yeah, I mean, this is, this is the, uh, this is definitely the, the highlight of the show and it's, and it's one of the top highlights of the tour. I mean, I, and I'll be, look, I'll be honest in the moment I, you know, I didn't, I didn't think it it, it was as good you, as you I have some do bias now. against the song, and you always let that influence your well, perception that, of the jam. That's definitely part of it. Yeah, no, I think that's definitely some, part someone of it. someone um, in this in this podcast has the Cap Earthling or Alien rated way too low because they don't like the song. You know. Oh geez, let's not get there. But it's fun. Um, but yeah, otherwise, otherwise, yeah, I man, I, I liked. I really like to see the inside out pop up. So does Neil. Um, I think everything else was. I think everything else was kind of. Uh, tailored to fit into this single set, yeah. um, you know, kind of structure. But oh yeah, this animal though. I mean, I think you know, I think I think it's for me the number two jam of the tour. And uh, yep. and shout out to uh, whoever requested Scotty doesn't know uh, right at the beginning of the animal intro. Uh, so good, you know. And shout out to Garrett who you can hear saying "Yeah" after the guy requested. <laughs> Uh, I definitely have that in my notes. And there's another thing you can hear that. somebody say later in the tour, but we're not going to uh, later in the show, but we're not going to talk about that one. Um, this was a fun set. Uh, you know, I was really excited to see Goose on my birthday. 
you know, second year in a row that I've been lucky enough to attend my birthday show last year was to boost in Glens Falls. Got to see the debut of Thatch, um, you know, big, big Modavon, Redbird with Trey. Uh, you know, that, that was a lot of fun. And here, you know, smallest venue, of the tour, 280 people. That was it. it. It felt like, you know, the kind of venue you'd see your local dead cover band in, which is so crazy that it's Goose. Um, another interesting thing about this venue is that, you know, you needed tokens for the bar. So there was like a like a, a machine outside the the room that you'd like line up for you to you know pay for the tokens, you know like drink tokens, and then you could go up to the bar and use them. So it was really weird. Definitely you know made it a lot more inefficient. There was a big line for a while, um, but interesting to note that you know that's how they do it. In Tell Brussels. me you've never been in an arcade without telling me you've never been in an arcade. <laughs> well, the, it's a concert <laughs> venue, Kev. It's different. The um, booze but, arcade. You know, Lead the Way was great. I mean, I, I love this song. Happy it's back in regular rotation. Um, and yeah, this animal, I was really pleasantly surprised that it, it went type two and went outside of normal animal because, again, this is the first time the song has done it. You know, we've seen some longer versions. The debut at Legend Valley, you know, Tahoe 2022, um, SPAC, you know, they're longer, but they're still pretty much within animal or, you know, like very similar to um, and this one, you know, you get this beautiful bliss peak, um, you know, and then that flow down east section, uh, but it was awesome. And then the rest of the show, you know, Seekers Part 2 destroyed. Uh, Redbird was hot. Inside Out was great. You know, my first time seeing that song as well. Hunger Sight. I would say, you know, I would have rather gotten a This Old Sea Jam for 13 minutes instead of a So Ready to close the show. But, you know, it was fun uh, and, and an excellent birthday. Well, I think somebody should talk about this Green River. Chugal. Listen, good. Chugal. Do it. It's jam charted well, for a reason. Some people might call it a Chugal Fecta. Some people might say it finished the Chugal Trifecta. But this this completes the goose catalog of the Chugal, which Ryan loves so much. And this particular version is very good. Um, you know, little anecdote here. My brother was playing this at work and people walked up to him and they were like, what is this song? This is so good. They so, had never yeah, heard this, Credence before? They had never heard Goose oh, okay. jamming oh, okay. Credence okay. before. I think I that, that say, is the that's thing. That's wild. That they've never heard Credence Clearwater Revival. Before. Yeah, that's I don't wild. think anybody's not heard oh, Credence okay. yeah. <laughs> at this point. But uh, yeah, that, that's a, Even that's I a story. Have. My brother. Yeah, so Ryan. Uh, very good version. Uh, as you might know, I really like the two guitar Goose. This is a really? good example of it. Yeah, I do. I do. And I'm going to say a lot of really nice things about a two guitar goose jam later, which uh, might get me in trouble. But yeah, this animal also very good. And then, you know, just a gift of a Seekers after that to close out the set. I think those in attendance were grateful for that gift. And very, you know, you know, you get a you get a. You know, you move right on to that set, too. Are we doing this whole show? We just like blast it through the set list, right? It's, it's what it's one set. Oh, oh my God! Yeah, yes. that's right. It's like one set. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, buddy. yeah. Forget about that. Yeah, buddy. Um, you get an inside out, and then I'm gonna sit here and actually like shit on spoon for a second. <laughs> whoa, 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 That sounds whoa, whoa. disgusting. <laughs> that's not allowed. Yeah. yeah. You can't shit on a spoon here. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Should have seen that one coming. Um, I don't really like this inside out. It's weird. It's got like very the weird piano, piano from is Peter. So cool. No, don't dig it. Don't dig it. Doesn't fit the song. I do like the delay piano, but like I just don't think about? it fit the song. And then Rick plays like blues in this. It's like a blues jam, which is very atypical of Rick. There's just not many like Rick blues jams out there, and this is incredibly bluesy. Not a a big fan of this Inside Out. And then yeah, you know you kind of you get the hunger sight. This old C, this old C, always awesome. So ready, always fun. But nothing really outstanding here. All right. So let's talk about Glasgow, November 15th at Bad. 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 It was bad. All right. Right on. Bad. And Glasgow. That's Barrowland's art and design, just for the record. Yeah, that's that's what I was shooting for when I asked you, not yep. to pronounce it. Um, but okay. So we get a, I mean, it, th this is like a fire set. 
when you read off the set list, you're like, this has to be one of the top three shows of Europe tour. You got a Jive One, Honeybee, Atlas Dogs, Dogs. Jive Lee, Hojo. Dogs. <laughs> you get the dogs, the honey dogs. <laughs> <laughs> the dogs um, Lee. And you get a Hojo, which is, you know, in the pantheon of greatest covers ever played. Neil loves band. Hojo. I do love the Hojo. No. First first goose song I ever heard played, which is not even a goose song, but First song I ever heard them play. There you go. And then uh, you get a turn clouds turbulence. And then, you know, the the one thing you have to talk about in this set is this yeah. jive lee, oh. which is not your typical jive lee. Oh man, there is almost no clav in this jive lee, and it also kind of lacks the fire of jive lee. So like when you hear these things, you're like, this version must have sucked. Nope, killer version. Also, also the, the longest, longest version. Ever. They've ever played. Yeah, I beat you to it. Uh, well, I would have said it if you just gave me an opportunity. Yeah. To say it. Via, via you, were, you were taking too long. I needed to. I needed to give the stats. Yeah, I just you know I like the speed of those from Toronto. No T. Um, Toronto. Uh, but yeah, Massive. very killer version of Jive Lee. Flyover City. I, I do enjoy the hell out of this. I mean, P- Peter's piano playing very very good in this, and yeah, you get a just moments of cloud. So it's just different, and Honey it's dogs. really, really good. Um, Honey dogs. Yeah, I think over. Honey dogs. A little bit of a little bit of a flow down. They were doing yeah, studio flow. Down. There's a lot of flow down jam all over this. They did it again one more time. But uh, <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, I think yeah, I think the studio only, flow vibes. Yeah, yeah, much better than the old lyric. Um, but uh, yeah, the 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 um, sorry, the Jive Lee was great. That was the that was the one highlight. I mean, I, it's cool that they're yeah. Like this was a song. It's sort of the the Asheville jive from uh, April 29th, twenty twenty two is another version that one, one of my favorites. Uh, yeah. I'll listen to that and every single time it gets me. This one, yeah, too. I think Neil once they they approach it without the clav and kind of just it doesn't have sort of the the the, the heavier pace um, like that one, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, 20 minutes in Jive Lee is a lot of space. So I think it's w- the one area to listen to from this show for me, for sure. And the first, especially, of course. Definitely. Um, yeah, and I, I was excited about this Lee as well, because, you know, we saw these big jammed out Lees in, in early 2022. Um, and I guess 2022 as a whole, uh, it's been kind of like, you know, fiery, punchy jam for most of this year. And so it was nice to see it uh, get a little improv turn. I do want to uh, pour one out here uh, for not alone. Uh, this was the first time of the tour. I believe it was on the set list. Um, you know, I was walking by the venue earlier and mm, they were right, sound checking it. And I was so excited. Um, you know what? May- maybe we'll get it at Goosemas. Um, you know, it, uh, we need to. It's kind of a spoiler alert though. Cause we haven't really talked about set <laughs> two yet. It didn't play not alone in set two. B, th- this show <laughs> happened already. <laughs> just, just so you know, like some of us have listened to it and know what they played, and presumably the people listening have heard Hot this ending. show. No, and and they're not, you know, they're not like, oh, I haven't heard this show, and I need to, I need to hear the opinion of these five schmucks, you know, rambling hey, about yes. goose. Before I well, hear only a couple of us are schmucks. Yes. The rest of us are pretty upstanding guys. You know you are a schmuck, right, Neil? Yeah, well, I'm one yes. of the schmucks. Okay, but just making sure. In any case. Um, but this, this was a this was a fun set. Um, you know, interesting venue here. Uh the sound was weird. There was a balcony. It was also the you know, first show of the UK leg. So you had, you know, a lot of people that were just coming out for the UK shows. Uh and so there was a kind of different vibe here um than some of the earlier ones. Um but you know it was great. Uh, Glasgow was a nice town, um, you know, uh, and there, there were a good amount of locals at this show too. I think there were a lot more locals uh, in the UK uh, than there were at, at some of the European shows, uh, which was really really cool. Um, but yeah, otherwise, you know, nice to get Cross Hojo off the list. Um, you know, Honeybee, no rain stick for the first time couldn't, since couldn't get through twenty twenty one. Couldn't get through customs. No, they they yeah they they couldn't get the rain stick across the ocean. Um, but otherwise, solid set. Anyone else got thoughts on it? 
It's a good drive, Lee. Very astute, B. Very astute. They didn't did, play. Did yeah, yeah. Then they didn't Spoiler. play. They did not. Alone, and then did. set two. The old man. Yeah. The old man who shouted it out at Arabelo and Boulder will have to wait a little longer. We'll have to catch it from the yeah, couch. Well, you know, yeah. and maybe we'll get it at Arabelo soon. Yeah. Listen. If anybody's listening out the there jo- who actually has anything to do with making set lists at Arabelo, please play the Ooh. goddamn song. I don't know. I'm just like I'm shouting just it like out. Just like Eminence Front I mean, is going to be played at Christmas. Come happen. on now, we shout it out. Christmas, yeah, it's a Christmas song, so I mean they should play it. Yeah, so is Lily Stegger, yep. and and right. Bruce Hornsby Ste- is going to sit on both. And John, and John, John Mayer on guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right, we're going to be chilling, making waffles the, in the morning. The Let's go set two. Let's go set two. <laughs> yeah, so set two, pancakes, spooning John Mayer. No rain after no rain stick, which I that's funny. <laughs> I have to believe there's a correlation there. Maybe there's not. I I think um, it would have been more more. Like I would have said, there was a correlation if they did honeybee and then no rain, right yeah. after. Yeah. But here it's I like, eh. yeah, that's that's nitpicky. But I don't know okay, anybody. So if you, you have get... intel on that, and you happen to be involved in making a Rabelow set list, you know, let us know if that was intentional. This has nothing to do with a Rabelow, but okay. I, so no rain so. into Bob Don. Yeah, Echo of a rose, with... hot, hot Echo of a rose. Yeah dark and evil and scary it's just the kind of echo of a rose some people on this podcast love by some some people i mean like everyone everyone (laughs) every single one of us does anyone here not Um, love that yeah no so good and then you get a drip field also hot outside of the box i mean it's fucking ridiculous this drip field um peter is possessed in this drip field it's just not what you're used to hearing in the back end of drip field I mean, wow. Wow. This second set is really fucking good. And it carries this whole show. And we were talking about this before we recorded. I I think this is one of the better shows that they've played in Europe. And we already talked about that first set. And we were like, I listed a whole shitload of songs. And I was like, Jive Lee is awesome. And I didn't say anything else. And then I'm listing off this set. And it's just, I mean, man, it carries it. It absolutely carries this show. It's a it's a very very good version of pancakes. It's an excellent version of Echo for Rose, and an excellent version of Dripfield. I mean, it's just this is good stuff. Yeah, this is this is another man. You're it, you, and you're absolutely right. I mean, the set two carries carries the show. I've, th- I've got this slide in at number three of the tour. This is my third favorite show of the tour, um, and it's largely. Because it's not because of dogs. You know, it's dogs. <laughs> dogs. <laughs> no, this set T is or this <laughs> set two. Oh shit. Uh, no, but yeah, this it's pancakes so is good. great. So I mean, good. it's so good. Uh, then, you know, then we kind of just kind of just skip over the no rain and the Bob Don. But yeah, this echo. This is another example of. Just another micro jam. This is a, this tour has a lot of short best jams, like Business. best short jams. Yeah. Well, what, right? What's another word for short jams? Well, like no. efficient. You got another one? <laughs> Wear your thesaurus on you? Well, whatever the opposite of macro no. is, no. it would be like the opposite. It would be like the opposite ah, of macro. Truncated jam. jams. Okay. I, I think I'm getting it. But yeah, this echo. There you go. This echo. Uh, look, I, I, I don't think, I don't think, I think people take for granted sometimes when Goose does these types of jams where within 10, 11, 12 minutes, they create something spectacular. And, and, and we're like, well, they, you know, it's almost like we say it like they chose to be efficient. And like other times they're choosing not to be efficient. I think that this is more difficult than then maybe we give them credit for, you know, you know, putting something together like this echo of a rose and the level of improv on display in such a short amount of time and how quickly they get into it. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, these are, these are great jams and and there's a number of them on this tour, which if you think about it kind of makes sense because they were, they were pressed for time, you know? And so I think, I think I think maybe that's maybe something that really good that could come out of this tour is like, hey, a little bit more practice than usual in trying to make sure that, you know, we kind of got through some of this stuff and, and 
you know, did the things that they want to do on stage, right? Not, not necessarily that we want to hear, but, you know, they kind of met their goals. And I would think in something like this echo, like, you know, they, they met their goal with that shit. You know what I mean? Like coming up with that in 13, 14 minutes or whatever it was. So, so yeah, anyway, anyway, really, 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 really great jam. Um, and then, and then, yeah, I mean, you said on this drip field, I mean, this is, this is a high octane, just boom. I mean, just train rolling down the tracks, you know, just coming at you all day. Nonstop. High energy. <laughs> yeah, let's no, I go. Think that, I think that I... it's no good stuff. Good stuff. This, this is a really hot set. This is a really hot set in, in, a, in a great city. And uh, yeah, that's Andrews, all I have to say. Um, Number three show. The yeah, I agree. I think the pancakes for me is um, incredible. Uh, I've gone back a couple times to it. Really, really good version. Uh, kind of gets into some 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 darker spaces and and then sort of a nice heavy big big peak a lot of rick sort of threading through teasing the the drop back into the uh the the, the closing section of the song and um yeah first no rain in a bit that didn't get some treatment to it which was surprising aside from one other jam or one other version that is unspeakable of course this one was not that too much not too much better um but yeah I liked it. Good show. I, that I think didn't that, happen. Yeah, the Jive Lee with the, the the few jams in the second set, um, really solid too. I have it up there high in this in the tour. Honey dogs. Mm, Honey dogs. You're in the jam quotient. Dogs. Honey dogs. If you're into the jam quotient. This this show is fucking hot as shit. Yeah. No, it's you got, guys it's got a lot of good jams. Yeah, you, you guys talked about this pancakes pretty well already. I don't have too much to add other than I was blown away by it in the morning. Uh, in the morning. Morning. In the moment. Probably in the morning as well. Uh, I, I was also blown, yeah, when, when I listened back in the morning. It's like Thank fucking lunchtime when they played it. <laughs> we were rocked. <laughs> Not at work, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Not at work. Fucking disco started. <laughs> <in 70 laughs> uh, and then, yeah, we, we were talking about, you know, at this point, like, if you're going to just use the no rain to go into Bob Don immediately, might as well just play Bob Don. Uh, you know, we haven't had a significantly jam no rain in a while. Um, and we're looking for that, you know, jam out these covers that used to jam all the time in, you know, 2021, back in the day, early 2022, um, you know, we're seeing the jams come out of a lot of the same songs. And so you have a song like No Rain that used to be a huge jam vehicle and super reliable, and it's a great song. They crush the cover. And so, you know, jam this out again for 15, you know, 18 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever, whatever it is. And I think it would be amazing. It also helps keep the improv fresh different you know like a different song they've jammed yeah, out pancakes before lots of times exactly and so the the improv is going to go in a different direction out of this no rain that, that's just my you know thought there bees bees um, really and, missing the four non blondes what's up cover jam it, paired with the jam. jammed yeah. out what's up paired with the jam yeah well oh, fuck yeah bring yep. it let's go bring it back yeah. If anybody's listening, could, could I mean, the Peter Positivity rap yeah. type two be? Well, yeah. it, it already, it, that's what, exactly what it is. I mean, you know what I mean? That's, there's, there's nothing type one about that. I think that, uh, you know, I don't know. I think that, I think that uh, for what four non blondes have put together is a special song that maybe you don't even take it out to that place. You know what I mean? Like maybe you just pay the utmost respect by just, you know, playing it and then, and then putting in your, you know, your, your own philosophic, you know, positive thoughts about the universe and, you know, music and truth. I mean, two, two so, men. I don't think, I don't think every song needs to, needs to get that treatment. Now the way it is the, deserves Wait, it. No rain. You know what I mean? Do you think it's has, has no rain yeah. earned it? Yeah. So. It has. Okay. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. Speaking of which, uh, I think you, you would also earn. I think No Rain has earned both the twenty-minute well, version okay. and the six-minute yeah. version. Okay. You know, what I mean? um, you know what else has earned something? This Bob Don and Bob Don has earned a whiff. Uh, you know, twenty twenty-four. This year, we have had two and a half whiffs, and they've played a lot of Bob yeah. Dons. 
two, the Milwaukee, two yeah, the Milwaukee half. one was a point zero five. There's no half with like, Milwaukee. Yeah. Ryan's kind of a half with. No, uh, no with. Hey. with stink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Sorry, uh, but this echo, it. this echo blew me away in the moment. <laughs> uh, you know, you get you get the evil shit. Uh, you get dark. <laughs> Uh, and shout out to all the people uh, who commented on the video I posted of this echo saying evil goose and, uh, you know, some lovely, lovely people being like, it just sounds like bad carnival music. <laughs> no, That's not that. evil. Um, and to that, I say, I don't really <laughs> give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's an awesome uh, jam and goose is great. And if you don't like that, it doesn't matter because you're not hearing me talk about this right now because you're not two hours into a goose podcast. Um, oh, let's be, let's be honest. Yeah, it's like no, an hour and a half. Without really? Like, uh, most people sure. are, but <laughs> Hey, to be fair, shout out to the 68. I don't think it's just the haters. <laughs> shout out to the 68% of you uh, that are listening to this still. Um, <laughs> this drip field, as Neil said, was incredibly hot. The energy yeah. in the room during the strip field was crazy. Uh, you know, I've never, See, you know, like I bet you at the disco that happened later in the night, there was no drop that was as hype as the, you know, why you got to be such a soldier all the time. And then into, you know, calling for the rhythm uh, verse, like it, people were, people were going crazy. Primal, right. So primal. So, primal so, banger. so that energy was that was primal. left in the room, do you think babies were made that night at the disco or after the disco? Could have been. Uh, I, I'm not, you know. One we're all just speculating here, like right? That. But yeah, we're we're all speculating. But it left that sort of primal footprint. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I think you know we're ready to uh, you know head a little bit south Manchester? now, down to Manchester. Yeah. Uh, nice little uni- college gymnasium, if you will. Uh, it literally on on a university campus, um, but it it felt like it was like the the multi purpose room. Uh, you know, like one day there would be like a bake sale in there. You get a job fair in there the next day. Uh, you know, a little little play happening on the stage, and then here's Goose, a nice little community um, place. Yeah. Um, and don't. this was uh, one of my favorite shows of the tour. Um, you know, no. first set here, we chugle, we chugle at the gate with an Elizabeth. Look out, Cleveland, flow down, everything must go, Cali magic and tumble. To me, th- this show was interesting because also due to some member of this podcast having a job and not being able to do the set list and the complete lack of cell service in multiple goddamn UK cities, which I don't understand. But I had to – so the venue was on the, the second floor, and there was cell service on the first floor. And so at the beginning of every song – you know, as the show got going and the service disappeared, I had to run out of the venue, down three flights of stairs. And Neil, you're gonna like, edit all this out, right? Tweet. Neil, you're gonna edit. Oh yeah, out. Neil's not editing this, is <laughs> oh. he? I would love it. Man, I hope so. I got it. I got it. Thank God. Okay, awesome. I yeah, mean, it's not video. <laughs> all yours. Um, but you know, shout out to Neil uh, for taking over the set list for the second set when somebody Wait, convinced hold on. me Jive, to just Jive, give up. Jive stepped in. Like, oh, Jive be- did. I want to give credit where credit's due. Jive stepped in. There was a point um, where so when I took over so dismissive. when he had to go. I think I, I, I think I did. Thatch okay. Well, there, there was a point. It was early <laughs> second set pictures. when the service downstairs even stopped working. And I was freaking out a little bit. And Garrett was just like, dude, like someone will handle it. Like enjoy the show. And I was like, that's a good point. <laughs> that's exactly what we we're always. Telling well, you yeah. somebody's got to do the set list. <laughs> Well, Brad, Brad does it. <laughs> Sorry, who who's seeing that one? I love you, Brad, but who's seeing that one? Chip, Ch- well, Chop I mean, sees it. Yeah, who's seen any of them? I mean, who's yeah. seen any Lots of them really in the Lots afternoon? Um, anyway, so th- this set was great. This first set was awesome. Uh, nice clav action and look out, Cleveland. Clam. You know, Elizabeth again, another like sub ten minute version that really gets out there immediately. Um, good peak business. Um, you know, mid set flow down fun. Longest everything must go to date. Good one. Um, this one is excellent. Um, uh, you know, and I think we're we're gonna keep seeing this evolve as a jam vehicle, which is really cool. Um, you know, I have a feeling that this might be the MVP song of 2024 if the song keeps on the trajectory 
uh, as it does. But this was great. DMG and Cali uh, Magic, no always fun. And it's no hot tea. Um, but, <laughs> but the, you know, Tumble continuing the streak of really solid, really hot versions. Uh, you know, and part of me is like, you know, I'd love to see a huge Tumble come out. But, like, you know, these set closers are are excellent. You know, I feel like it has been a little while um, since we've gotten, you know, like a, a jam tumble. Uh, I think we're a little due for that. Um, but, you know, these these hot type one closers, these hot type one peaks, they're pretty great. Uh, who else got on this first set? Sick everything was go. Cool. Yeah, man. Um, you know I love a, a hot. Yeah, that's a, that's a sick everything must go. And... I like the hot type one tumbles. Um, this is nowhere near on the level of peach tumble, which I know everyone mm. on this podcast loves, oh. but yeah, I mean, Oh yeah, th- this is a pretty good, pretty good oh, cat head show. I, I really enjoy the Elizabeth. I really enjoyed the lookout Cleveland. When we did the day after show, I was saying like, I think we did this on the day after show. This one felt like longer than it actually turned out to be. Um, then you get another flow down. These flow downs have in Europe have the, the kind of old school long intro flow. Downs. Not, not just, just for clarification, not like literally no. old school flow down. Yes. But not like, you really know, don't, don't do that. Yeah. 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 No, not, not, that, not those old school. Flow not, downs. not the old school flow down. It took me a second to pick up on what you were talking about. Thank yeah. You. No, not. No, old school I need to get it eventually, Neil. You're the long to... intro flow downs where you get like a little bit of a jam before the song begins. Um, and I think this one, eh, maybe it's one earlier, but like tops out at like five minutes before they actually jump into the song. And it's not just like simply just like the drums kind of leading up to it. And then, yeah, I mean, all in all, good set. This is a really good show. Again, I think the second set carries the show. Um, but yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah, for me, the EMG is the highlight of that first set right there. Uh, you mentioned it earlier, like song of the year. It's going to be up there with Thatch in terms of uh, Evolution, yeah. what you're comparing in terms of different versions of the songs being played. And, and those so- those songs being uh, much like previous jam vehicles like Wisteria, Rosewood, uh, Western Sun back in 21, like those types of songs. No. Arrow. No. Oh yeah. <laughs> there we go. Uh, are we ready for set two here? Well, I just wanted to also say that everything must go. Is really <laughs> awesome. Thank you, B. Man. We appreciate your analysis. It is. Succinct analysis. <laughs> uh, very, very concise. No. We're good at that. <laughs> remember, remember before we started this podcast, when we were like, "Oh, this will be a quick one." We it are. is quick. We're, we're, I mean, we were, yeah, yeah, I mean, we're clipping along. We're, now. we're crushing we're it right on a roll. Yeah, yeah. We're, yeah. We're burning through them. All right. Second set oh, yeah. here. Yeah. And I mean, we're going to add it up like 45 <laughs> At <minutes>. least. <laughs> at least. Yeah. I'm, yeah. You know, I'm curious to see. I, I'd like to, to say right now we are two hours and 20 minutes into this recording. I'm curious how long uh, that, time, that time mark is into, into, into this episode. So please let it tag us on social media <laughs> at AAT Goose Pod. Let us know how far into the episode you are right now. Uh, I'm looking yeah, forward to seeing, seeing those three tweets. Yeah. yeah. Um, so set two here. Yeah. What hash <laughs> is there? Is there a hashtag they should use? Or like, yes, hashtag hashtag guys slap the the, Yes. <laughs> That's not okay. Thank you. How are people going to find this? The hashtag slap <laughs> What if someone hashtag can't find it? Uh, uh, can if find someone it. can't find what? Are you okay? Uh. <laughs> Are you good? He's on Mastodon. He's lost. It's okay. Like, he's not even. He's, he's fine. There are no he's, way, he's good. waypoints. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> All right. He's processing. So the second set here. Normally. It's good. Uh, we open up with the the Axel Foley infused yes. "I Would Die for You." Love to see this song making a return. I really Hope we get top. another mm-hmm. one at Goosemas. Hope it you know makes its way into the regular rotation. Then we get Thatch. Creatures drive a Western Sun drive. This is one of my favorite sets of the tour. Um, just front to back. Mm-hmm. Straight heat, um, awesome stuff. I would die for you. Got a huge crowd reaction. Uh, you know, people were really stoked to hear this one again. Prince, man. And, you know, it jammed out a little bit more than Red Rocks, I think. Multiple Axel F, Beverly Hills Cop theme teases from Rick, which was sweet. Uh, and then we get Thatch. Um, you know, I, as I ran downstairs to try to to try to try tweet the set list, um, I... I you know, said to one of the security guards, like, are you ready to hear like one of the best songs ever? 
and she was like, then why are you leaving? Yeah. And, that, and, then, uh, and, and then I was like, to throw you out. <laughs> no. And then I was like, and then I was like, I don't have time to explain. You gotta go. I, yeah. I'm kind of a nerd. Yeah. Um, I don't have, yeah. Yeah, I don't have time to explain to you who I well, am. That's not what I said. I, I was, I was more focused on getting it out to the people at home. So they yep. knew what song was being played. Um, you know, via the setless thread, it didn't work, but this thatch is awesome. Uh, you know, I really like it. similar to the Amsterdam version. You get this stripped down first section. Peter collects some coins. Um, and then, he lays into this pad sound on, on the Nord synth. That's just beautiful. Uh, and I, I was I was amazed in the moment. You know, you don't hear a ton of that stuff from Peter. Usually the synth work is more of like an undertone uh, to the jam. And so hearing this be at the forefront and underneath what Rick is doing was so, so good. Um, and then the, the, the riff that Rick stumbles on and really like – you know, milks throughout the jam was just so, so good. I think this is my favorite of the three thatches from Europe. Um, I've been listening to it a lot. Uh, I know Neil, you know, has been listening to it a lot. Um, you know, neglecting hanging out with his friends, uh, you know, pre pod to do so. Um, but th this is an amazing, amazing thatch. Uh, and then we get creatures, which you get your typical hot creatures jam. And then you get some serious bliss shit. Uh, it's like the cap drive, uh, you know, coming again, just emotional, beautiful peaking. We've got a patented jive goose scoff happening here right now. Let's give him a round of applause. Um, and then closing out the show with drive, a Western sun drive. Um, you know, we get drive. It's hot. Cool down with the Western sun. And then it was funny because I, I don't remember what was on the set list for this show, but they, they weren't planning on going back into drive, I don't think. Uh, you know, Peter had put the guitar back on. I forget what they were going to play. Um, but, you know, he was like, thanks, guys. You know, and then Rick started playing Drive, and Peter was like, I guess we got one more for you. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. You know, it didn't know how long it was going to no, go. Pete, no, Peter was like, Peter was like, hey, we've got one more for you. And then Rick started playing Drive. <laughs> and then he said, <laughs> he's, like, like, oh. uh, he's like, sorry, he said, shocker. Maybe. But yeah. this was... Yeah, so this drive, this second drive, is one of my favorite moments at a Goose show that I have ever experienced. Uh, you know, they're jamming, it's hot. No, listen, and I hear Peter start to play SOS like during the jam. Uh, and and I think to myself, like, Don. oh my God, like he's, he's you know, he's he's teasing it. And I'm like, it would be so cool if they like went into this here. And then, you know, you hear Rick lock in on it and the rest of the band follows. And like the, the place was going crazy. You know, when, when everybody realized this is what they're doing, they're playing the ending, you know, it, the energy was sky high and something totally spontaneous like that, you know, doesn't happen a ton with goose right now. Uh, you know, and it was just so cool to hear the band was, you know, so happy about it. You could tell. And it, it was, it was amazing. I've listened to this, you know, eight minutes of drive into that, into that SOS ending so many, so many times. Um, and it was funny. I, <laughs> I ran out of the, uh, I, I ran out of the venue after the show ended, I ran out of the venue and to the bar that we were going to down the street. Cause I knew they had Wi-Fi. And the first thing I did was like, you know, catch up on you guys. Like, how are we noting that on dot net? <laughs> you know, I like, <laughs> like what, what is, what is the play? Uh, so shout out to, to coach and Peter, uh, for helping out, uh, with, with the decision there. Um, and we, we have, we landed on a footnote with, with Don ending. Um, but yeah, that's, that, that, you know, that's me on the second set. B. That, uh, that reminds me of Goosemas 2020. Oh, back in the day when they ended when they ended All I Need with the Mississippi yeah. Half Step kind of outro jam they do. Um, anyway, that, that's what that made me think of. Um, but yeah, this uh, hey this, this this is a really really good set and this is a really good show. Um, number five show. This is my number five of the tour. Um, but yeah, I love, uh, I mean, I loved I Would Die For You at Red Rocks and was really hoping that 
you know, that would become a cover that they kind of, kind of gets into some regular rotation. So, so it was super, super happy to see that again. Um, and open in the second set. Rick has those cool. pipes. He, Rick has then, those yeah. pipes. So when he sings songs like that, like that's, that's like all I can hope for, like is, is what initially got me interested and hooked into the band were singing those, uh, those vocals and he has such good vocals and, and yeah. So yeah. When you call me yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, mm. uh, be. yeah. not a human, I'm a dove. Um, <laughs> And then, and then, yeah, Thatch. So, is that? Do you think that? Okay, will we will we hear the Mario coins at Goose? It depends yes or no? if Peter has uh, downloaded yes a sample no. yes. onto the synth. I would say. I would just yeah. say yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He he seems to like that. Did thing. you see that Spafford did a whole Mario Brothers thing? No, I uh, at showed it to Katie, but no, like I, don't, I don't. Before. Wrong, Spafford, wrong pod B. I didn't know awesome. you did. I follow Super Mario Brothers. Jesus, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I, have, I have notifications on for any band. Um, okay, so do you remember when Paige did the Beavis, Beavis and Byhead stuff? Poor Man, Ryan. What year was that? When Paige was Poor doing Ryan. the Beavis Paige and Butthead That was the, the Albany Yem when Trey had you the that, Neil? Beavis and Butthead. Or when Trey had the talking Beavis and Butthead doll. Yeah, that's right. The, he was like Paige. doing the the thing in the yeah in the mic. Yeah, it was like yeah, the yeah, Albany yeah. Yam, I think. Well, yeah, but like we didn't have video. Like you just heard that shit on tape, and like it's it wasn't literally clear okay, it was but it's from. not Paige. And for the record, it's noted on .net. He's furiously googling right now. <laughs> oh, <I don't laughs> okay, but uh, anyway, it's not important. Yeah, yeah. It just made me think Wilson of that. and the Yam vocal jam um, featured quotes from a talking Beavis and Butthead doll that is from twelve nine ninety five. Thank you. Oh shit! Yeah, it's twelve nine ninety five. Of course, yes. Yeah. Don't pretend you knew was what at, I was talking about. It was at the show one week before that. The greatest tweezer of all time. Yeah. I was gonna say you never Ryan, talk about Ryan that says show. It's no, Ryan says it's no twenty fourteen. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> wrong year. Wrong year. Yeah, twenty eighteen. Still, that, that um, is the goat yam. Yeah, uh, it's actually a miracle. We're at like two hours and twenty eight minutes into recording, and Ryan has not yet talked about twenty eighteen. I, I got that out. Here we are. I got that out today. Bristol. Shout out to HF Pod. We're also a Goose podcast, and we're talking about Manchester here. So, are we done with uh, Manchester? Oh, I, I love how they Bristol. let you do your thing, though. Can we just take a moment to talk about that? They let you do your thing. I mean, you just went. I mean, it was nuts. It was like 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 a like a fucking beagle that was just like <laughs> let out to like, chase a rabbit. I think- no, and you then, said it best, Neil. It was like the the character in the Lego movie when you're like build a spaceship, and he just like you know loses his shit. And build the spaceship. Build the spaceship. And then the second you built the spaceship, they were like, "Get the fuck out!" <laughs> <laughs> like that was like the most amazing thing. It was a great um, fun. Yeah, um, it was a great fun. You did a great job, a, though. So let's talk about the second set a little bit more because I feel like nobody has really said anything of value. Oh, the second set. Yeah, Neil. Please tell me because. Whoever spoke oh, last, we both, really we both just much. like gushed on "I Would Die for You." Br- yeah, Brian I, was, o- Brian was like... over there like singing some of it. <laughs> it's Ryan, Ryan's looking for higher levels oh, of fluff. Yeah, okay. Then. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking I'm, for I'm Neil not going to fluff the hell out of the set. I do really enjoy this Why? thatch. I enjoy all thatches. Um, I was listening to this thatch right before we recorded this show. I know. In fact, you were you were like emphatically test- texting me saying like get into the stream yard and i said no i have to listen to this thatch i don't know i mean it's just it's a good thatch yeah that's um i don't know how to like differentiate between thatches at this yeah, point they're all good i mean some have like really distinct sections that you can point out this one i don't think has that i think the thatch that comes later on this tour that ends this tour has a very distinct section that i'm really high on that i can say like this is why i think this thatch is different this one i don't know it's just it fucks because that's what Thatch does. And that's why we should Fair. move on to Bristol. So yeah, so I'm the only one that has thoughts on the, the drive with the Don? Okay. Fair enough. Drive Don. Oh, well, I mean, the Drive Don was cool. But like, I mean, if Ooh, nothing else, no. it was like set less trickery that we were like confused about it, in the yeah, moment. Yeah, it is what it yeah. is. I just, okay, I yeah. guess I guess it was it's... way cooler in the room than it was on tape. But that's fine. No, it was cool. But it was drive with. Don Autry, yeah, man. but it wasn't planned and it just happened and it was awesome. Anyway, doesn't matter. Let's go to a boat. <laughs> Let's go We're to a boat. boat. 
So the we're on band, a boat. They did not. They did not play boats and hoes. So the band is from Wilton, Connecticut, but that's not where we're going right now. We're going to Bristol, uh, a sister city to Wilton. Is it? No, no. Bristol, Connecticut. No, no. Which is like <laughs> right near where I grew up. And thank you. Wait, you grew up in Connecticut? Yeah. Jesus Christ. I, yeah. Should we talk about Max? <laughs> um, Do you know people that went to Bristol, Neil? <laughs> uh, for fuck's sake, um, Kev, tell us, about Kev, boat. please continue. So. As we get on this boat, like, obviously, there's a nautical theme, right? So Fantasy Goose, we're all trying to pick, like, water-oriented songs. So it's no surprise that they open with the whales, right? Uh, oh, into Butter Rum. We get some butterflies. Uh, that slower uh, rock- <laughs> Rockdale, like, that woozy sort of Rockdale that they got accustomed to playing. I don't know if that happened. Uh, did that happen on Europe, or was it before that, that they kind of slowed that tempo down a little bit? Uh, no, slowed it's down like, like many, early 22. Okay. Yeah. Many, many Rockdales in Europe went that Yeah, they, w- they went a little woozy, a little laid back, a little, you know. Uh, it's almost disorienting how slow they go. Uh, like you're waiting for that next beat. They were jet lagged yeah. Rockdales. Uh, Wisteria Lane uh, in All I Need. Uh, nod to Rupert Holmes, a uh, British native, uh, escaped the Pina Colada song. So, so this was the whole one set, huh? Another missed. Unfinished. Nobody's happy about that. Uh, in the Kylie, can't get you out of my head. Another boat-oriented song, Old Man's Boat, with uh, white lights. little abrupt ending to that boat, into the white lights. Yeah, a, a criminally abrupt ending yeah. to the boat, right? Like If you're going to play Old Man's Boat, it. you get you got to play the jam. I want the J.J. Kale jam. Play... Yeah. I actually think this is a good time. Like we, we we don't do vibes much. We've done way too many vibes on this podcast, but like this is a vibes uh, tour. This particular this is very much a vibes tour. Yeah, yeah. I mean this this venue is remarkable. So Ryan, tell us about this venue because like yeah. Well, actually, before you tell us, like I, I have to say, like my impression of this venue is that like must be really cool to stand inside if it's like you and five people. But if it's you and the amount of people that they put in the venue, yeah, that place has to suck. It is like a solid steel wall. There is no actual moving. And what was the number? Ca- is that right? <laughs> what was the number uh, capacity wise? I think it was a few hundred. Yeah. But yeah, like the, the the boat itself, like there was like liquid dripping from the Oof. ceiling. Like that's how it was hot in there. Um, but uh, I, I was on the balcony. I can't speak to how it was on the floor. It looked very, very tight down there um but and i mean it was packed on the balcony floor is tight um but like peter couldn't even have his second nord on the stage uh and he was like basically behind like a speaker stack like like a pa stack like if he like moved wrong he would like bash his head into the into the pa um it was it was a tiny stage it was a tiny room um it it was it was it was crazy um and it it's literally a boat that's been a concert venue since I think the eighties. Um, I'm out of the water. It was like slightly <laughs> listing to one side. Uh, really. An experience, an experience, man. I think that's awesome. Like kind of weird for sure. But how cool is that to fucking see him on that kind of a venue? Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. The bar looked like super like new and clean. I, I saw a couple of photos and I think there have been some renovations I mean, it since really the 80s nice. uh, to, yeah, to it the interior, nice. not to the, the boat itself, obviously. It, also, like I want to sure. be clear about this one thing. Bristol, not on the, the seacoast. This is incredibly no. far inland. Just like a canal. Yeah, like how the fuck does that boat get that far inside of England? It's been there since the 80s. I don't know, Neil. So in the um, 80s, was the, the water higher? Like, I, I, like I have questions. Neil, He's making stuff up, Neil. I don't have yeah. an answer for you here. Um, <laughs> but th- this this was a great set, you know, hot. And you get the, this little, the, the meat of the set, if you will, is this Wisteria All I Need. This Wisteria was very exciting because this is the first jam in a while where Peter plays guitar throughout the whole thing. Uh, I think the last very significant two-guitar jam we had was the uh, boner drive boner? I think you're forgetting about the West- or the Green River from just a couple of shows Google. ago. But yeah, no, I'm not. Google. I, I know, I know what happened. Uh, but this was really exciting to see him stick with guitar and remind us all of the the greatness of two guitar goose. And I hope that you know he felt this uh, and and feels a little bit more inclined to play some more guitar at Goosemas, you know, going into next year. 
Uh, but some some great themes in this wisteria. I love to see Peter taking the lead, um, and especially that that like repeating riff he gets into later on in the jam. Super catchy, and love the way that they build off of it. And then all I need here, you know, thirteen minutes. You get these these Legend Valley Madavan type of themes. Stop, start, going super hard, pulling back. You know, a little bit of a a breather, nice little major key thing, and then just charging forward again, toggling back and forth. Uh, re- really cool stuff here. Um, and then, you know, my first Pina Colada song, love that, you know, on a boat, uh, unfinished mist. Don't love that. Um, (laughs) I think it was my first Kylie though. So, you know, I'll take it, uh, an old man's boat with no jam. You know, I, I think you said it before. I'll say it again. It's a tragedy. You know, we've all heard of seven minute white lights. Uh, and there, there's not a single person that I spoke to after the show that was like, you know what? I love the decision they made. Like everyone was like, I'd rather them end off on seven minutes of boat jam. Gotta have the JJ Kale jam, man. It's just, you got to vibe out, you know? Um, but a little disappointed, no jam there. Um, but, you know, White Lights was hot. So that's uh, that's what I got for the boat. Anyone got anything else? I'm on a boat. Well, <laughs> I just... So for me, this all I need is the the thing I keep going back yeah. to. And this is another example of a jam that's really short, you know, especially in comparison to most of the all I needs that we tend to talk about. Um, but it's so good. I mean, just the, you know, the way they go back and forth and, and you know, kind of start stoppy, but, but the way they just kind of go back and forth from like the nice... Nice kind of pretty sounding to the, you know, kind of more, I guess, like kind of chaotic, um, like cacophony of sounds and then back to the soft, you know, it, it reminds me a little bit of Slave to the Traffic Light. Um, that's kind of what I think about every time I listen to it. Hmm. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I really, really love that jam. I mean, I it's it's one of those jams that you know, you kind of listen to it and, and sometimes being short, these jams will lend themselves more to this, but I, you know, it's, it's easy to just kind of rewind back a few minutes and, and hear that again. Cause it's, it's just so cool. And I think also it's because I wish that they would have kept doing that for longer. Like, I think they could have, I think they could have kept doing that and I would have been happy with 10 more minutes of it. You know what I mean? And even extending out some of those, the, the, the soft, kind of gorgeous parts, you know, or the, you know, more chaotic. I think they could have even drawn all that out in between changes, but it just, it just sounds so awesome to my ears, uh, you know, when they do things like that. So yeah, I just really, really love that jam. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm on record. I can really, really, really like this Wisteria. This is the Wisteria that Peter stays on the guitar for the entire thing, which I think Ryan, you already mentioned. I did. And when that happens, I think you just get a different sounding song. Um, it, uh, yeah, when Peter plays guitar, it's just different than when he plays keys. He takes the jam to a different place. And I think that he has a capability when he plays guitar of just steering the band. Um, and that is yeah. one of his, like, you know, I, I said it before, it's like it, the secret weapon of Goose is when Peter pick, picks up a guitar and plays rhythm guitar, which I don't really think this is rhythm guitar it's when not, we're talking yeah. about it. Um, but he is playing just a series of notes. Um, you know, he plays rhythm guitar in the way that, like, I guess Bob Weir played rhythm guitar, which is not rhythm guitar at all. But it's not, though, because Bob Weir was always complimenting what the rest of the yes. band is doing, which is not a knock on Bobby's playing. No. But Peter is leading the jam, as you said. Bobby, yeah. but there are very few times where you're listening to the Grateful Dead and you're like, wow, Bobby's really leading the jam in this direction. It's always he's acting as the counterpoint to Jerry. Yeah, and, I and guess my point what's happening. Peter is much more of an active guitarist. My point is he's not just strumming chords. Correct. That is my point. And so I think that's what happens in this jam. I think it makes it sound different. Is this like a, a groundbreaking jam? No. Um, is this one of my favorite jams of the tour? Yes. I just think it's just really good stuff. There you and, go. 
And also, and I'm going to say something that's slight, slightly controversial oh. here. So like when we're talking about take. this particular show, I think this Wisteria followed by this All I Need is the best 30 minutes of music they played on this tour. And I think there's like a couple like compact moments that you can say like, we'll compete with this. But I, I think this is it. I think this is, this is, this is the best jamming that they have to offer. Is this the best Wisteria they played on the tour? Maybe not. Is this the best all I need they played on the tour? Maybe not, but like no, not maybe. It's not. Um well, I mean, yes. It's it's not. <laughs> yeah, like, I would just like to say is, Neil's when Neil's you put them together, can I let me finish my thought, Ryan? Okay. My point is that together, this is 30 minutes of excellent music back to back. There we go. Thank you. And and just for the record, that that controversial take from Neil did not get a patented Jive Goose scoff. Uh so He's doing this Win fucking draft kings, dude. <laughs> respect. That's just out of respect. Yeah. Uh, let, let's go. Let's go down to London. London. Our only two nighter. Our only two nighter. Uh, and and our last couple of the tour. The show Ohio uh, of the United Kingdom. I I actually thought that Manchester was the show Ohio of the UK, yeah. uh, in my opinion. But you know, Neil, what what do you think is the show Ohio of the UK? I'm not even answering. <laughs> so uh, oh, we're here God. at the Electric Ballroom in London, biggest venue, the tour, fifteen hundred people, uh, and night one was my fiftieth Goose show. Uh, suck it, Neil. Congrats, man. Uh, I got there before you. It's not a competition, um, man. But congrats anyway. It is though. But it's not. Uh, Neil, how many shows are you at? Forty nine. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, we'll celebrate it's next good. week. Chief Thief of Joy. Yeah, I'll, I'll hand out some hugs. Like it, it's not a not race. To, not I'll to, hand out some hugs. That's Orion, though. Don't, well, but, don't but, give him one. one. But okay. actually, uh, forty-nine of Neil shows is fifty shows to Ryan. So what? Is it probably? <laughs> oh, that's true. The, ra- the, uh, the, long the ratio is probably higher than that. But fifty shows yeah. ago, Neil saw his first show. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you agree. I'm gonna like clip that soundbite. Thank you, Jive. That's, that's, Actually, that's really clever. And then a co- a, that's a funny. That's a funny. A joke, couple dude. years as well. So, I think. well, I mean, yeah, Neil saw his first show way before yeah. me. Anyway, clip um, that as well. First set here. We got <laughs> Arrow, Born, Lead Up, Rock the Casbah, Slow Ready, Silver Rising, Hot Tea. Just a really great set. Uh, you know, I like Arrow in the show opening slot. Uh, you know, honestly, get, gets the band warmed up, gives them a chance to you know get through a composition and you know, ease into the jam, you know, hot stuff. Uh, lead up was great to finally see uh, one of these shows, you know, after being at, at the festival earlier, um, you know, love the song. Let Jeb sing Casbah. Um, and it was so funny. I the, I met some locals uh, after this show and their favorite part of the night was Casbah because they, they were not expecting that. Uh, and they knew the song the and they loved it. You know, Clash is from London. Yeah. Uh, so they, you don't people, say people were, people were really excited, uh, for rock the Casbah and you know, shout out to Jeb on vocals, yeah. slow, ready, always fun. Silver rising, always fun. And Neil, where does this hot tea rank for you? Oh, this hot tea is hot. Oh, it's hot. Yeah. I like All this right. Hot tea. Well, that's the, I mean, best hot tea <laughs> of the show. <laughs> Hard to argue with that one. B. Well, Hard to argue with third that. Third best. I was going to go too far from that. Any other thoughts uh, on this first set from anyone? Or Casba? Nope. <laughs> All right, uh, set two here. Fish in the sea. Uh, that was a complete audible, not on the set list, not discussed. Rick walked out on stage and decided that he wanted to play Fish in the Sea. We'll always take that. Love this as a second set opener. Um, and this Red Bird um, is probably the Red Bird of the tour. Uh, Neil, I think you alluded to that earlier. Uh, we got a patented Jive Goose scoff. Well, wait a minute! Here. Isn't this the one that Peter's? No, he's not even on screen. Isn't this the one that Peter's? He leaned isn't in. Isn't this the one that scoff. Peter's mom was at? Yes. How the fuck? Uh, so shout out to Rita. Jive Goose, how the fuck are you gonna scoff at that? I don't know. Listen. Yeah, he was gonna he's... walk away. Paris is better. Pa- His Paris is scoffing is better. at not. Scoffing at Rita. His mom was and there, man. We can't. We can't stand. We can't stand for that. Yeah, man. Uh, uh, so I'm gonna go bias on that right there. Like watching that red bird happened like there was so much emotion going on right there listen and and there were some times 
uh, during these London shows where watching Rita watch Peter oh my goodness. was just like so like dur- during slow ready. She was like dancing along with him. It was it was so cute and so wholesome. Uh, and I loved it. Uh, shout out Rita. She's the best. So after Redbird, I was so, so excited to get Moby uh, for my 50th show. One of my favorite songs, uh, obviously, and, you know, hits hard in any setting. This is my third Moby. Uh, you know, so excited to see it for a third time. Uh, hopefully more soon, you know, because it's, it's the best. And then we get Arcadia, which, you know, the Redbird may have been the better jam of the set, but this was probably my highlight of, of the show just in terms of vibe and energy, because this Arcadia, people went nuts for it. You know, again, lead up and Arcadia were both played earlier in the tour, but they were at the festival, which, you know, very few people who were following the band around Europe were at. And so this was like a, finally, we're getting the damn Arcadia. You know, it's about time. Um, And they get into this nice little bliss jam initially, um, which is really good. People are, you know, dancing, having a great time. And then they quiet it down and do the slow build all the way up to the finish. And it's patient and just then eventually explodes. And it seems to go around like a few extra times. Um, it just people were going nuts, you know, jumping up and down. The, you know, it, it was like it's one of those moments where you like you're going to remember like being there. I, I'm going to remember how I felt at the peak of that Arcadia forever. Uh, it, it was, it was special. It was, it was so, so cool. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm grateful to have been there for it. Uh, and then we get, you know, the third and final Empress closer this time, uh, Kev, would you do the honors? Shama, llama, shama, llama, llama, ding dong, baby. <laughs> nice little sandwich here. Otis Knight um, and the Knights, the, the jam out of Shama back into Empress, you know, very, very well done. Very well segued. Um, but you know, good way to, good way to close out the set. Uh, but this was awesome. Who's got thoughts? Yeah. I mean, this, this one ends very much like a festival set, right? It's got a lot of festival totally. set songs in it. Totally. <laughs> um, we were, had the whole second set for, really a, a very, very jammed out Arcadia in the set. And I, I don't know if we necessarily got that, but you know, it was pretty good. Um, red bird also very good. Um, you get that fish in the sea. I'm working backwards to the set now, but um, yeah, I mean, all in all, pretty decent. I mean, nothing special. I feel like we're all geared up for the next night, right? Night, night two. Night two. two. Yeah. Tour closer. L- You're London they're going to go two. hard on this one. Strap in. Strap in. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Extra straps. Nothing says going hard like a Dr. Darkness mm-hmm. opener. Monday night. Monday night, November 20th, London night to tour closer. All right, guys, we did it. Set one, Dr. Darkness opener again. Hard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we just like <laughs> tour closer. You know what I mean? Oh, what are they going to open with? Yeti, Mr. Action. <laughs> going hard. Please Chattanooga forgive me. Chattanooga's own. And, uh, you know, so please forgive me. You're immediately thinking, oh, well, now you know this is going to be Philly a Philly Night show, 2, Red Rocks Night right? 2. Because cause it, it, it's, it's, you know, they only, they only drop, please forgive me, in big or shows. Or two or closest. So, so we felt, we felt really good. We felt really good when they played this. And then, and then this amazing hunger site. And then, and then a really high energy Seekers pairing to bring the set to a climactic oh, yeah. finish. But this set's really, I mean, I don't want to overshadow the Seekers. I was going to say, wait, did, did you climax for, during the Seekers B? Is that what you're saying? This this set for me is all about the hunger site. I think this I think this hunger site is when they said, okay, it's tour closer. Rip it. Now it's going to rip it. Let's, rip let's, it. let's go. Because uh, there wasn't anything else in this set that where they were going to drop a big jam, right? So this was it. And so... They did it and we got it. And this is a huge, huge jam. I kind of feel like Rick especially locks into a theme that he kind of stays with um, really throughout this jam. And I and I think there there have been times when I've listened when I've listened to this and thought, uh, maybe maybe things get a little repetitive. But then I'll then I'll listen to it the next time and, and think, wow, this this really is a great jam, you know. 
And so I think I've kind of landed on the, you know, the latter for the most part. I, th I think this really is a really, really great hunger site version. Probably the, I don't know, I think de this is definitely a, definitely a top three or four jam of the tour. Um, you know, maybe it's my number four jam of the tour, I would say. But yeah, I mean, just, just some really good uh, kind of cohesive jamming and, you know, a really kind of extended high energy peak. So it's, it doesn't really take things super far out there, but, you know, definitely delivers there nonetheless. Clavger site, some might say, right, Neil? God damn it. No, Jesus Christ. Right. <laughs> Listen, there's yeah. some great clav here. No one, no one, no one else said it, and no one I know. really I, yeah. ever wants I said to hear that it for again. No <laughs> I will not say that again. Um, but and your own clavers, mother agreed with me, which I know. was like, I agree. I know it, so it was dumb. There's it, there's a love. team of one on clav. Yourself. I was excited I about, about the clav. Um, you know, I love it when Peter puts like a little bit of delay on it. Uh, it gives it a cool effect, especially when he's shredding like this. Um, yeah, just, uh, you know, as B said, the momentum, the energy behind this yeah. jam, Rick going crazy. Good stuff. Yeah. I mean, like people Spuds search in a for cape. a word to describe it. And like some people just might choose hunger site. Can't, but you know. can't fly it. I like, I like yeah. that actually. Yeah, hunger yeah, pretty, good, pretty, good. pretty good way of putting it. You can't fly. You can't fly if you're it not wearing good. a cape. Shout out to the cape. Oh, that's right. He's wearing the cape this show. He's right? wearing the cape at this show. Spuds is wearing the cape. Oh, so like actually, I want to tell a story because like uh, Kev it. and Jive actually can relate to the story. So I wear capes all the time. I, so yeah, yeah. It, Kev is is a cape wearer. I mean, he's an educator. He does wear a cape. He's a hero. So for the folks that listen You're to this a podcast, hero, we we appreciate the shit out of Kev. Thank you, because he listen, works the hardest job in the world. We, we know some educators that educate, and we know some educators. The vibe. Shout out to all the Kevin's educators. An educator. Shout out to yeah. all the educators because it's not an easy job. And a lot of them love Goose. Yes, they're fucking heroes. So, yeah. no Goose. Hashtag Goose Teachers. So, backing up two steps here um, before I like, gave props to Kev. So, when we were at. Take that back? No, I did not take it back. Okay. So, when we were at Pine Creek to see Goose in 2021, Kev, Jive, and I were all there. The guy who created that cape that Ben was wearing at this show that we're talking about right now was one campsite away from me at Pine Creek. That's cool as hell. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really nice guy. His name is escaping me right now. I think the name of his company is like wicked awesome Cape company. And like, I might be getting it. It's wrong, not the, it's but... not the jam guy. Is it? <laughs> it's not the jam guy. He was with us. He was hanging out with us when we were at, at uh, Pine Creek. Um, so in any case, that guy's really special guy. He and his wife and his um, daughter were there. Uh, really good folks, and man, I wish I knew the name of it off the top of my head. But in any case, that's pretty cool. Uh, that's where that cape came from. That those capes were very close to you when you were at Pine Creek. So there you go. Thank you, Neil. Yeah, this is the type of show right here, man, right. where they're just cooking, and you're like, man, I know the tour's coming to an end, but how cool would it be if they played like three or four more shows? Like that, right? that, that, that's the kind Listen, of, that's the kind of stride. I was stride, feeling the same way. That's the kind of stride they were hitting. That's the kind of energy right. they were bringing with this show. And, uh, you know, it would have been cool, you know, three or four more shows. Yeah. I, I definitely think, you know, before we get to the second set here, I definitely think that they really started to hit their stride mm -hmm. in the UK. You know, they're, they're used to the smaller venues. They're like, you know, fuck it. We're going to get out here and we're going to play. Um, and so I definitely think, even if there were another like two, three shows uh, after you know this London run, it would have seen some cool shit. Um, but you know, Christmas. instead, you know, we we get this amazing second set, uh, which on paper, I think, if if you took, you know, if you asked an AI to write you a four song goose second set in the year twenty twenty three, this is what comes out, and it's not a bad thing. Maybe, Maybe. Madavans, pretty ripping. I think, oh yeah, yeah. I I would just I I'd, I'd have something else. Oh, okay. I feel it now. I mean, based on an AI depiction yeah. of a second set or what you would want. Well, I think we would want AI J jive AI picking the, the best. Yeah. yeah. The Never best mind. Stuff. Okay. Tell us about the second set. So jive, jive, so, what's so jive would give AI access to his spreadsheets. I mean, 
<laughs> well, now I'm so now I'm thinking like, man, what? But what would I replace that with? You know what I mean? Like, anyway. So this Madavan, so Madavan feeling now that strip field. So this Madavan, I think it's my favorite jam of the tour, and I don't expect that to be everybody everybody's position, but I really really like it because it, it does some of the things that I really like. One of them they don't do very often, and that's the that that's the early crazy stuff they do where they're doing the some chants they're doing some chanting about the doctor the doctor is being it. in and, and i don't know about all a that chance. kind of stuff right more of like so, a, a sensual whisper into the mic yeah we, we we've been talking about this kind of kind of offline but it reminds me of the all i need from uh 8 10 19 uh where they do the Lionsgate portal stuff mm. uh which is that's actually a really, really awesome version of that song too. I just listened to it recently because of this Madhavan and I hadn't listened to it in a while. And every time I listen to it, I think, man, this is, you know, this is actually really good. It's, you know, it, it does the cool Lionsgate portal stuff, but then it's just a really good jam, you know? And it's, it's fun to listen to those, those jams from that era. But anyway, uh, it also reminds me of also from that era, the, uh, the drive from Steamboat. With uh, IB, yeah, J- uh, Bruce, who was next to us during this jam, started yelling "IUB" at at the stage. Yeah, um, yeah, as as he does. <laughs> yeah, that's another one. Um, that's another kind of kind of similar kind kind of jam like that, or feel, or vibe, or whatever. Contains element, uh, but but this, but but the, but but then even even after they come out of the out of that, you know, the doctor stuff. This this jam has lots going on. You know what I mean? It's it's not your standard kind of Madavan where it's like, okay, we we do a little something after the the proper part of the song. Um, maybe we do a little second thing, and then we go into the to the classic, you know, Madavan finish. They really kind of weave in and out of some some more up tempo stuff and. Uh, taking things back down. And then even when they do go into kind of what you would think of, okay, here we're now we're, we're going into the final refrain, you know, jam and, and whatever it's, they still then kind of go back, exit that again. So th- this, this just has a lot going on. And, and I feel like it's almost like they don't want to end it. You know what I mean? The, every, every time you think that it's about to end, somebody, somebody kind of just veers off course again, but but every time they do that, what they're doing sounds great, first and foremost. But they really seem to be in sync, and, and they really kind of maintain just an energy every time they kind of come back to what you're expecting from Madhavan. So, so anyway, I just really like I, I really liked this jam, and, the, and this I, I think this is a top top version of Madhavan. It might be the best Madhavan of the year. Um, Ooh, so I, Ryman, Ryman is. Uh, you know, it's certainly up there. But yeah, I, I just I really like this one, and and again, I think it just maybe it's because of it of of some of the things that it does that reminds me of you know some other jams that I really like, and and I just love the kind of the fun factor, I guess, of you know when they do different stuff like that where they're you know talking about different things, you know, and saying words that aren't <laughs> part of the song, and it's just cool. It just sounds cool, you know. I just Talk, like it. We'll see you now. Um, Mother, yeah, yeah, but anyway, I you want know, to make you breakfast. Far, that, that's, <laughs> Sorry, had to do. I'll cut it short. Uh, as far as the rest of the set, I, I, you know, another great thatch. I, I mean, all three thatches from this tour this are was all foreshadowing. Like, yeah, it's 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 like Neil said. I mean, you know, they all they all get the job done, and um, you know, they're all great jams. And then Dripfield, you know, to close it, which that was a little bit un- maybe unexpected for me. You know, it makes sense, but. I kind of felt like after they had played it in, in Glasgow, and maybe I was maybe I was more surprised to hear it in Glasgow because of, in my mind, that meant we probably wouldn't hear it again. But um, yeah, I mean, Madavan feel it now, Thatch Dripfield. That's you know, that's a that's a really strong way to to close things out, uh, and you know, just one last set of the tour, you know, one last show of the tour with with no encore, um, one last set of the tour that you know, you probably wish was a little bit longer. And then, you know, we've talked about, you know, kind of the, some of their, the challenges they were dealing with and, and, and so it is what it is, but when it's all said and done, I mean, 
this is the best show of the tour for me, you know, just, just on the back of, you know, mainly the, the hunger site, you know, the, and then the Madavan, but you, know, you throw the thatch in there too. And yeah, it's a, it's a hot show, hot show. Definitely. I want to talk about this Madhavan, uh, cause you know, I, I talked earlier about Peter blending different sounds, uh, with the, with the Leslie, uh, different patches on the Nord and early on in this Madhavan, you hear this beautiful blend of synth and organ from him, uh, both going through the Leslie speaker there. But when, when they get into that initial blissy theme, you know, with the doctor, we'll see you now, uh, kind of thing. He it, just the sound in the moment. I was like, that is so cool. And again, that's another thing he can't do in the States, obviously, because a real organ can't also produce a synth sound. Uh, so it's another unique thing that he's creating with it, with this smaller rig. And I, I just loved his utilization of that. But yeah, this was so cool because you have this bliss jam that kind of, you know, harkens back to this Madhavan harkens back to the Ryman in a lot of ways, because that was another one where Madhavan had a conspicuously long show gap, uh, you know, it was cut from a couple of set lists along the way, just like in, in, you know, it was on most of the set lists for the UK run and just didn't get played. Um, cause you know, they ran out of time, wasn't in the right spot. Um, and you know, open the second set here. We all knew it was coming. Same with Ryman night three, you know, at that point it was like, they're playing Madhavan here and there's going to be no other option, you know? Uh, and so we finally get it. There's this catharsis of here's the Madhavan about time. And they go into this beautiful bliss jam. Um, but where the Ryman one focuses on that bliss motif for a lot longer and really builds on that. This one, you get this beautiful bliss jam and then it feels like they're going back into Madhavan. You know, it's going to wrap up relatively early. And then just like electric forest in June, they decide like, no, we're going to, we're going to pivot from here. We've returned to the, the head we, we're going to pivot out into a new jam here and peter just goes crazy uh on piano um i mean it, it was awesome and again it's another one of those moments where people are going nuts in the room uh pe people are freaking out it's it's hot it's fiery um and just i i, I love this jam in the moment feel it now great mid-second set thatch always fun and love love the uh the goosemiss foreshadowing from rick there with the carol of the bells teases uh that was pretty cool what christmas um, song are we getting man uh, at goose yeah i hope it's a christmas song by dave matthews man oh listen yeah, probably not noted dmb enjoyer ken i am yeah thank you yeah he he wants that yeah. uh but we will get linus and lucy for uh, sure yeah that. for sure would have. easiest eight pointer yeah. of the tour right, <laughs> yeah, just gotta pick Which the right night time. yep yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to so, be six luck. on night one, and then if they don't play it, eight on night two. Yeah. So, you know, I want to talk about this Madavan for a little bit. Do it. There is a sound that Peter gets out of the synth in this, and I think you touched on it a little bit, Ryan, that is remarkably indie rock. It is. It sounds like, and you know, I say this a lot, like, because I love Yola Tango. It sounds like Yola Tango. And Peter has this incredible capability of making the synth not sound cheesy and he does it in this jam the the synth is like a, a such a slippery slope you can fuck it up and sound like really awful really easily and he doesn't do that in this jam and it is it is like kind of a weird cheesy synth sound that he's doing in this jam before it yeah. kind of takes off and i don't know i just want to make that point that peter is my favorite synth player Maybe ever. Wow. Um, because he just doesn't suck when he plays a synth. There, I mean, there are incredible musicians that can play multiple keyboards well. They can play the piano well. They can play the organ well. They get on the synth and it sounds just bad. And he doesn't sound bad when he plays a synth. So my, to my untrained ear, he plays a synth in a, in a very unannoying way. There are oh, many yeah. musicians I respect that play the synth in a really, really annoying way. Peter doesn't do that. Um, so yeah, this particular synth part in like before it takes off, I think you know what I'm talking about. Yep. Sounds amazing. And yeah, this Metavon is exceptional. It's an exceptional Metavon. And I agree with Jive. Like which Metavons are better this year? Ryman? Oh, well, you good. agree with Jive. Listen. There, there are certainties in life. 
death taxes and you two agree. Yeah, except when we don't, which is like the most that never happens. disagreement ever. Uh, that yeah, never but, happens. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's time to fly home. Let's sack it up. And now that we're home, you know, we've been away for three weeks. You know, there's a there's a sack on the porch waiting for us. Waiting for us. I'm sorry. Is it waiting for us? Yeah. It's waiting for us. No, Don't choke on the sack. sack up. <laughs> we have, we have, to, ad- ah, we, we, we have to address the sack. All right. Um, well, I'm ready to address the sack. Well, it sounds like you're not ready. I am. Can, it, can I can I'm finding this bag? Can here. I go first? All right. Yes, Kev, yeah, man. Go so, friend of the pod, uh, Captain Incredible at 902 Vickers did a remarkable remarkable job of staying uh, up for the webcast this tour. Will he be able to make it all the way through the webcast from his hotel room each night at Goosemas after he heads back there following the first song? And will someone be there to slap him awake? Someone will be there to slap him. So I, I, slap I would like to uh, go on record is, is to be a, uh, against the slap Vickers campaign because, uh, again, we want to concern ourselves with the welfare of Mr. Vickers. Uh, we don't want him getting hurt. So if you see him goose him, uh, please don't slap him. So Blame him. Please blame but it's it's very possible that he does uh, go back to the hotel room after the first set to go to sleep because that's just what yeah. he's used to. We'll we'll keep everyone updated. Um, you know he'll he'll get up in the morning and come join us out out at the bar. You know where we'll still be because uh, you know that's that's ske- that's the Vickers schedule routines um, important. But yeah, very important. Hashtag slap Vickers, but no, more no, importantly, no. hashtag blame Vickers. No. And by slap, no, 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 blame only. By slap, Neil. No, Neil had a good point. Yeah. By slap, we mean give him stickers. Okay, that's an that's an important clarification. That's an important clarification. I'm gonna slap. Please, I'm gonna slap Vickers. Yeah, please give Vickers slap slaps. Tweet. Yeah, yeah. Um, stickers. He's a fragile man. Stickers. Yeah, and he will not be able to withstand being slapped. <laughs> he's he's got plenty. Yeah. He's got plenty. <laughs> there we go. Um. So, uh, Peter Heller at Pistol Four Ninety Five here says. What do we make of the PRS showing on this tour? Will we see more of it, or was it simply the effect of smaller venues slash equipment availability? Um, I think ha- having spoken with uh, Loomis a little bit about this, um, I think it was just dialing in uh, the amp and in, in the different rooms how Rick felt the tone was. You know, I know partway through the tour they found like a like a loose cable um, in in one of the speakers in the amp that was like resonating more in the the deloise guitar than the prs and so that's why rick used the prs for a few shows then he went back to the prs after that i think it's just rick you know really trying to hone in his sound and i'll say that there were a lot of times on this tour where i felt like his tone sounded incredible like amsterdam using the new guitar as well um amsterdam his tone felt absolutely phenomenal uh and we know we've seen some hints uh from the luthier himself uh, that there is a second edition of the guitar uh, of the Empress on the way. Uh, and so I'm curious, you know, if we'll see that in early 2024 and what that will sound like, but I know it's just, it's an ongoing crusade uh, for Rick um, to find the, are you breaking news there. right here that he's getting another guitar? No, this has been posted multiple times yeah. by, is... by Deloise. Oh, okay. So maybe yeah. I should. No, this is not inside information. Read something. I don't have inside information. Read a book, Kev. <laughs> Hashtag I don't know, read man. a book, Kev. Let's start that. I think people read too much into this guitar tone thing. Like yeah. Rick is going to land where he chooses to yeah. land, and uh, I think there are things that he can do with the Luis guitar that he cannot do with the PRS. I already alluded to that earlier in this podcast. And vice versa. Um, he likes the noise. Yeah. Right. The PRS is smooth and it sounds clean. The Deluise is noisy and it sounds distorted. Yeah. And I think he chooses that distorted sound. And to be perfectly honest, I like that distorted yeah, I sound. I do too. I like when it sounds noisy yeah. and dirty. Um, and Ill. most folks don't like that. I like that. And I, I just don't agree. It makes the Bob Dons extra special. Oh, yeah. Yep. yeah. And, and the, like when he hits the thatch intro on the Deluise, like that. Yep. You know, it hits. It hits. We got some more sack action here. Here we go, B. Um, so B, what do you think of this one? Um, from Volker Skrzeba at Big Volker. 
you think the band counts the Europe tour as a success and that they could do it again someday? True. Okay. I Retweeted true. by friend of the pod. Be done. No comment. <laughs> oh, that mean? I've got one. Um, and this one's actually uh, relevant. Is that another question? Uh, okay, Neil's in the is sack. that a question or a comment? <laughs> True. Yeah, this this one like is relevant because we're all friends. Um, and there's no hard feelings when I ask this. Oh, oh boy. Oh. Um, so from MD Schwartz oh, 58. Boy. Uh, who became sick of Rye Storm first? Happy or Garrett? Uh, the, the answer is Haps. Uh, I'm pretty sure before we saw each other on the first day in Paris. There's some history there. <laughs> yes. It, it was the anticipation. The release. That's pretty full, good. Full, yeah. The anticipation of being disappointed. Yeah, full release. Listen, hanging out with me is a lot. <laughs> I won't ask what uh, Vidan said about people's birthdays or about Big ZD. Um but, No, it's Big Zita. <laughs> Uh, oh boy! Uh, best coffee in Europe, right? Uh, I don't drink coffee, so best kombucha. Yeah, best kombucha yeah, in didn't... Europe, Ryan. I didn't have. There's no kombucha, kombucha in Europe, Europe too. No, there is kombucha. Oh, just kidding. The venue in Copenhagen uh, had a great uh, hard kombucha. Actually, that was like made by them. It was great. There you go. Hard kombucha exists in one part of which Europe. country had the best local honey. I didn't have any. No propolis, nothing. Oh no! I mean, I had propolis with oh, me. It okay. wasn't local. Yeah, local. I, like... I don't leave. I don't leave home without it. Yeah, man. like flyover. You were allowed to smuggle that shit overseas. Yeah. It's and not then, illegal. Like... I would imagine yeah, that would like kill a... all their bees. Spritz of the European bees. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, all right. In any case, I think it's a good point to start. All right. Here. Well, this is this has been. We're just getting uh, fired up you know, here. Come on. Another edition of uh, we did what well, hold on. We we can't we can't uh what we can't what end now? Yet. Why? We've gotta we well we've gotta have a yeah, fancy let, let the man speak his oh, piece. For fuck's sake. All right, go ahead. For the price for the price of I actually don't for the have price. It, uh... All right, so it's time to wrap up. You know, I think we've said everything that we need to say here. Um you know Oh that's fucked yeah, up. he's never I'm he's never gonna come out right. again. All right. <laughs> Um, I'm back in. Yeah. Yep. Pull up the stats, man. Uh, no, there's no gloating. I mean, I'm not. Yeah, no, just I'm state not... the state the stats. Yeah, yeah. So we're so here's the thing. I I think we all think that there's we still have Gustamus. Is that a separate tour uh, or is that attached to Europe? I believe I believe they said Europe is going to be Europe and Gustamus is just going to be like a two shows for fun. Okay. Well, it is what it is. If that's the case, then then EV dude won Europe. Shout out to EV dude. You beat Chive. Good shit. He's on Mastodon and, as well. Oh uh, wow, Masto Masto's doing well. Masto's crushing. Days. Oh yeah, the yeah. John Mayer, second place. Masto. Also on Masto. Yep, crushing. Brad, Brad Solari, Man, also on Masto. Fuck Twitter. Huge figure on on Mastodon. Yeah. He is the yeah. Fuck, right, he's fuck, the jive. He's fuck, the jive goose of Mastodon. Fuck X, Jesus. As well. I listen. I I I was doing pretty well at the beginning of the tour, and hold then on, I egg- hold on, hold on. We'll get to <laughs> okay. We'll get to you. Oh, I, I'm <laughs> way. I'm down, way I gotta scroll down. down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I know. I haven't finished this low uh, in a while. <laughs> Nukem, Chris Nukem in fifth place, or tied for fourth. Okay. Jerry Freak in sixth place, and our own. Hosewood Neil in seventh place, back in the top ten. Look at you, Neil. I'm so proud nice of you. See. Nice. And then uh, Denver Arcadia. Who's that? Fuck that guy. Sounds yeah, like we fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. Blame him. Blame Slap him. him. Actually, Vickers was tied with with Neil. Ha! <laughs> Suck it, Neil. And then our own D Witty coming in the top ten. Also, Diddy ass. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd have to scroll down a while to find Ryan. And then uh, further to find Kev. Hey, fuck you. When was your last golden goose, motherfucker? <laughs> oh. Shut up. <laughs> Too long ago. Um, yeah, I I was doing well at the beginning of the tour. I and then I that. got an egg on my birthday and never recovered. Yeah, it was uh 
Hey, look, these guys up at the top are crushing it. Yeah. Um, good competition. And to be honest, and, uh, I really don't need to play again until Ryan wins the Golden Goose. Like, I really don't. <laughs> yeah. I could just, That's never going to happen. I could just sit on the sidelines until that happens. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually happy to come in fourth with some of uh, It's a top. Yeah. Players. It's, it's oh, a yeah. top level. Well, it's top a, level crowd. You won the pod. It's an unprecedented. Yeah. And I, I, you know, continued my unprecedented streak of top 10 finishes in every tour, every competition. Uh, that I've ever entered. So. And let's be honest, wow. like those people that you're hanging with, like those are super smart, like goose people. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, hey, look, Neil's back in the top 10. Shoulders of, D's, of giants. D's in the top 10. Yeah, Pod's coming back for the most part. Um, Maybe Ryan will win a golden goose soon. Who's, who knows? Someday. Yeah. Someday. It, I will lay my head down. It, yeah. it might happen. It might not. Uh, all I know is that I'm still having a good time. And a week at this time, it's Goosemas. You know, we're all going to be there. Everybody that matters Goosemas, at least. Man. Let's go. I um, wish I could be there. Well, I mean, you could, but, you know, you have something against I can't. leaving. The st- I, can't. I know. because No, if you leave the state of Colorado, you just like burst into flames or something. Just, like, and, uh, you can't do that to people. Yeah. Yeah. A lot going on in Salida. It's pickleball season. Oh, it actually, it's it always yep. is. I know that, that always is. Joke. Oh, that was ABP joke. man, um, always be pickleballing. <laughs> Amen. Right. Uh, well, we appreciate everybody listening to this long episode. Uh, you guys remember earlier when we were like, "Oh yeah, this will be a quick one." It's like you know <laughs> half the length of our last recap. Um, but you know what, guys? You know what's exciting. The next time we're going to be doing a recorded episode, do you know what episode that's going to be? Probably a Goose Miss Recap. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, if we want to do one of those, I was thinking more along the lines of the Jam of the Year bracket. Bracketology? Yeah. In, in just, just a month bracket madness. Uh, from now, we will, we will be getting going. Uh, and so people stay tuned for information on yeah. how to get involved in, in seeding uh, this year's Jam of the Year bracket. Uh, that'll be out after Goose Miss. But we are so excited oh. for a whole new year of blaming Vickers. Like it's it's going to be amazing. Uh, you know, it's bracket season. Um, I'm excited. Can we talk about any of our new partnerships? I mean, yeah, we're not. We're we can we can hint at it. Uh, okay. But we we we've well, we leveled some, up some, some new partnerships that I'm pretty excited about. Oh yes. goodness gracious! How awesome the, is that? Yeah the the it's bracket like, uh, is uh, is on another level this year. Yeah, y'all are going to be very happy with the enhancements to the the Jotty uh, bracket for 2023. It's yes. and there's some pretty exciting stuff coming, man. It's pretty pretty awesome. Yeah. It's going to be pretty awesome this time of year. And just in case anyone was worried, on the line for the prediction contest this year, there is another Golden Strange Man. Have no fear, Neil will be hard at work in his garage spray yeah. painting uh <laughs> for for the next few months but, uh, yeah. getting it but ready the, yeah but the crotch maskless will be a different color <laughs> it might be there's no telling what's gonna happen i mean i'll paint yeah. it but whatever happens after that let's get this guy some skinny painters tape and see what he can there do anyway <laughs> it's uh it's time for us to sign off here uh so we'll see you guys uh next week we'll be doing day after shows for goosemas of course Back to our usual 3.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, it's going to be awesome. We can't wait to be at the mothership uh, with everybody. Triumphant return to the States. And then it's bracket season. And we are so excited. So thank you, everybody, who's listened to this episode. As always, reach out to us on social media. Tell us your favorite moments of Europe tour. Uh, our takes that you agree or disagree with. Um, anything at all at AAT Goose Pod on all socials. Uh, but we love you all. Thank you so much for listening. And Happy we will holidays. See you next time. Happy holidays. Yep. Po- Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Pot- whatever, whatever you celebrate. Potent fruiting bodies. Yes. Spritzes. Yep. All of the above. And we'll see you guys on the next episode. Thank you so much.